Welcome back to another week at 4K Kings. Uh, this week we will be discussing Raging Bull, Eternal Sunshine, Good Burger, Johnny Depp, and more. Stay tuned. And we're back. We are back. Welcome back to another week at 4K Kings, Blue News and Reviews. I'm Matt. I am Carlito Brigante. And Carlito, I know that you're here uh, on a very special mission. You're I here, am. You're here on a very, for a very special reason, which we're going to maybe hold off on till the very end to kind of share with the, the fans as to why you're here. All right, let's keep it mysterious. Um, but in the meantime, uh, for those of you that are new to this channel... I am Matt. This is, of course, Carlito, and we are the 4K Kings. We are here, as always, presenting physical media news, reviews, other updates, things that are entertaining. I just show up, but you're my friend, Dave. <laughs> I'd do anything for you, and you know it. So Carlito just, you know, he just shows up uh, whenever he wants to. Uh, but for <laughs> those of you that uh, are used to coming to this channel and have been coming to this channel for a little while, thank you. Thank you for commenting and uh, Thank you. Keeping us keeping us going. Thanks for all the likes. Real stand up guys out there. If you haven't decided if you're interested in subscribing or not, but are still coming back every once in a while to check us out, thanks anyway. We would appreciate the sub, but no big deal. Thank you for just coming in. Go ahead and subscribe or you will not make it to paradise. Don't be like me and die twice in your own movie. <laughs> If you uh, are interested in listening to this kind of content in your car on the way to work, <laughs> picking up your family, uh, we are on Spotify. Yes. The full uh, yes. podcast here will be up uh, prior to all the cut segments that we kind of filter out there on YouTube. So if you're interested in hearing this whole conversation unedited, please go there now and check that out. Unless you are affiliated with that Benny Blanco low-life purse snatching maricon. And if you are affiliated with that Benny Blanco <laughs> purse snatching such and such so and so come check us out on youtube if you're listening to us on spotify now and see what this what the hell is going on here in person because sometimes i don't even know so what's on the agenda matt <laughs> last, enough with the introductions my god my goodness well last week for those of you that uh, tuned in or maybe didn't tune in we gave our sincerest apologies to bruce willis and to will smith we'll probably have to yes. apologize to a bunch more people this week after yes. whatever's about to go on here uh we covered the state of physical oh, i believe i heard that the great actor al pacino suffers from athlete's foot <laughs> We do. We need to apologize to him. I think we might. Uh, we might have to. the whole. The you whole, have to. the whole industry needs to you know apologize to you him for to. treating him the way that they have based on his severe affliction. Oh, that's right. I know I did Jack and Jill, but I don't deserve this. Oh, he did, not me. I, I'm Carlito Brigante. That man just looks like me. That is true. That is true. But uh, we also have all of our unedited content up now as well for those that wanted to hear more of our conversations about Will Smith, Bruce Willis, physical media, Miami Connection we covered. If you want to hear our unfiltered thoughts on Miami Connection as well. That I believe we also well. had some unfiltered thoughts on Carlito's Way, Rise to Power, the classic film from 2000. Two, I don't remember. We covered three, that. A, I don't know. We covered man. that about a year ago, and uh, time flies. Time does fly. I don't think that one was a hit for us. I don't know that anybody really. Oh, cared it, it was a hit it. for me. Highest grossing film starring Carlito Brigante to date. To date, for to sure. date for sure. But you're right. Let's just let's just get right into it. Enough of the updates. Um, we have a lot to cover this week. We have a lot of physical media news going on, a lot of other things to share. The first thing I did want to share is that a really close friend of the show, a group that we really miss and haven't seen or heard from in a little while, Everything Blue, they reached out and they dropped us a comment on our page the other day just saying, hey, what's up? And we kind of you know, had a little, like a very mild back and forth, just asking, how have you been? Where are you, what's going on? When will you be returning? We all kind of miss you guys. And they said they'll have more news to share in the immediate future, giving us Carlito a little bit of a, you know, uh, newsworthy, you hear it first kind of a situation. Well, that's great. Breaking news. My first question for everything blue is why so depressing? <laughs> there why are more so colors out there. We don't need to focus on the blues. 
We do. We do in this scenario, Carly. We, uh, we do. We do. Uh, we do. You call my joke, man. <laughs> we do. We need to focus on them. I'll You're a sly you. fox, man. You're a sly fox. I will tell you that I've actually missed them for a while. I didn't even know about them until we kind of started covering uh, this stuff or started this channel. I had just saw their um, uh, their Shaun of the Dead release, and you said you had bought it on Blue before. I did. And they I were did. putting it out in 4K, and I had this is the first time I had saw their packaging, their materials, the things that they were using and creating for these exclusively for these releases, and really incredible job. And I was really sad to hear that they were kind of going away. So I'm excited to hear that I was they too, maybe man. are coming back. I was too. Take, for instance, this nice rigid slipcase for Carlito's Way brought to us by Zavi. Now imagine this rigidity multiplied by two and you have what everything blue does. Everything I miss blue. them. I miss them. And more. I actually had my eye on their casino they own a casino? Yeah, their casino. Everything Blue Casino. Come now. Um, check them out. That's their newest business venture. Wow, that's um, big No, news. their 4K release of casino, like, obviously, that had already gone and came and went before I even knew about that company, but they only pop up on eBay for, like, $200 every once in a while. That's a steal. I mean, kind of. I don't know. It's a really great addition. I just haven't been able to pull the trigger on it, but um, Everything Blue, glad to hear from you. Thanks for reaching out. Let us know when you're going to be coming back. Um, give us that exclusive. We appreciate it. Um, also Carlito, yes. so, some exciting, maybe sad. I don't know, depending on how you look at it, hmm. but last week, as I had just previously mentioned, we covered Miami connection 4k. Hmm. They were coming out from vinegar syndrome and what looked like to be the Miami connection release to end all releases. It had an extra version of the film. It had new, uh, feature like documentaries It had people being interviewed that had never been interviewed before. All in all, it was an amazing... I believe set. I even showed up for an interview, and I've never even seen the damn movie. You were. You were there. I don't know if you've actually... What been, is this? I don't know if you made it on to the features or not, but nonetheless, Umbrella Entertainment in Australia, they are releasing Miami Connection as well. And they're not just releasing it in a standard issue, you know, Blu-ray or anything. It is only blue, so it's not 4K, so be prepared for that, but... It is coming out with a nice little slip box. It's coming with a t-shirt and it's coming with the soundtrack CD, which we talked about on the Vinegar Syndrome release and we're kind of like wondering, hey, I wonder if that will come with it. It isn't. I believe Russ even made that comment. He did make that comment. And we talked extensively about what how great the soundtrack is. So to have this as part of this set really is, like I said, it's it's great. But it's also sad if you it's haven't sad. made up your mind it's on what sad. version you're going to purchase. Do you need to purchase both? Carlito, your thoughts. Well, Carlito Bragante is a big fan of Miami Connection. <laughs> because I had a connection from Miami back in the 70s. That's where I got my blow coming up through the Bronx. Got it. So I pre-ordered the... Uh, the 4... The 4K four, four, the four K. Four K. I pre-ordered it. Then this comes out. And well, what do I do now, man? Well, what do I do? What do you do? I don't know. It's like, I think we need one I'll of I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm lawyering up. I'm calling Dave. And they're going to hear about this one, Umbrella. 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 The pain I mean, is about to come. Nice slip box. It's got like a reimagined art on the inside, but the, the classic art is on the outside. You get a poster as well. Check out that poster. Um... And there's also an exclusive introduction by YK Kim for this release, as well as a new Rift Tracks audio commentary with the Mystery Science Theater 3000 audience. So those three guys, a robot and whatever else it is, those comedians that do those kinds of commentaries, they're going to be on this. I cannot be friends forever with friends who are going to rip me off. I know it does. It kind of feels that way a little bit, but. I don't know. It, should we get both and then I'll get both? Oh, I'm, get, I'm getting both, man. <laughs> I'm getting both. <laughs> My anger is completely false and phony and for the platform. <laughs> can, can I have the shirt? <laughs> you may, man. Thank you. You go ahead and order. You I, get I'd the love, shirt. I'd like to get the shirt and the CD just for, I mean, I don't know what the full price is here at the moment, but it comes out in June, June 8th. Um, so it's. I don't know. So again, not too many people um, kind of were interested in Miami Connection. I know when we when we put it up, uh, they're, they're it's still very small niche, niche 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 uh, film niche. That, that needs a bigger audience as you niche. as Russ mentioned and you back up. I'm sure. 
Um, so maybe it's worth kind of keeping to shell out the money for Miami Connection. Keep the Miami Connection releases coming. Thank you, Umbrella. Thank you, Gail. Thank you. Uh, also, some information that has been finally released for the Warriors. Which ones? The Warriors, which we covered, uh, I forget, even forget when now, I guess like about a month ago. Um, we covered them coming out, that film coming out an imprint from the imprint label, and it was like $69.99, something to that effect, and it was pretty outrageously priced, but everybody was grateful that it was coming with the theatrical cut as well as this director's cut, which mm-hmm. I guess a lot of people are more familiar with airing on television and has all these um, segues that are animated and stuff that kind of bring you out of the movie. I remember Russ and you, perhaps Carlito, thinking the same. Um, but at any rate, there were no features announced for this thing other than you were getting these two cuts of the movie. So now the features have finally been revealed. So Did I guess someone hire an Uber to get James Rema into the booth to record a commentary. Uh, James Remar absolutely came back for an interview. He did not do a commentary. That's uh, right. But for this release now, again, it's a very expensive release, but it does look like you're going to get a good amount here, which imprint, I have never really seen them do too many new featurettes on anything, but it looks like they got quite a bit here, including a new audio commentary by author and historian Chris Pogliali. P- Pogli, Pogli Alley? You said it right, man. Pogli Alley. <laughs> as well as a former editor of Fangoria. You've got uh, The Warriors in the Cutting Room Floor, which is some deleted and extended scenes from the television version. Mm. Audio commentary by film critic author Walter Shaw. You've got mm. Sound and Fury, scoring of The Warriors, an interview with the composer. you got an interview with David Patrick Kelly, interview with actor James Remar, interview with actor, actor Dorsey Wright, and as well as the Ancient Greek Roots of the Warriors featurette, and finally a video essay by Chris O'Neill, which is produced for this release. So That is a plethora of special features. It's a lot. It is. It's a good amount. I mean, it's still very expensive, but per- perhaps you're able to get this at a de- uh, uh, cheaper price, maybe at that deep discount website. I know they usually, have, they usually are slashing prices out there, but it is a good amount of featurettes for anyone that is a Warriors fan. Uh, Carlito, are you a Warriors fan? Well, of course I am, Dave, but the real question here is, if you escape to paradise, which version of the Warriors would you take with you? I'd probably take Carlito's Way, Rise to Power. Good answer. Good answer. <laughs> Only answer. Only, Only answer. answer. I like it. I like it. Carlito, did you pick this up? Where are you going to pick this up? Do you know if Russ was going to pick this up? Is This, this is pretty, pretty steep in price. Well, What were your thoughts? Wait for a 4K thought, release in U.S.? My, my initial thought is, what's the price? It previously, when we first covered it, $69.99. That is coming from Australia prior to any shipping you'd have to pay. Oh, no. With that kind of price, I'm going to have to take over a nightclub, build up some money for a week, and try. <laughs> no, I will not be buying it. Got it. <laughs> Okay, well, for all of you out there, here's some updates. Here's some news on that. Pretty cool. Um, if you already if you already pre ordered it, you just you know you got yourself a, a fine pre order now. You definitely got one. Solidified. Congratulations. You paid you paid the money. Now you're gonna get something good. Um, I do have some sad news also for anybody out there that had purchased Henry Portrait of a Serial Killer. Ooh. Uh, I know that was something that uh, Russ had talked extensively extensively about when we covered he it. He told me he pre-ordered it. Yes, he pre-ordered it. And I do believe that there have been some errors found on the disc. Ah, oh, no, not again. Yep. But now they're gonna Here doing, we go. They're going to be doing a disc replacement program with it. <sighs> Just so, once. I don't want them to come with the pain. Let me read what Arrow has to say. Uh, here's the update. Thank you to all our customers who have pre-ordered and recently purchased Henry Portrait of a Serial Killer. Unfortunately, we have identified two faults on the disc. A brief shot that incorrectly repeats over a different scene, appearing in the feature of both UHD and Blu-ray releases. The incorrect color space being presented on the Blu-ray release as well. So we are investigating how these faults occurred and will work to put measures in place so issues like this can be avoided in the future. For now, we recommend holding on to your copy, and we will follow up with the further information as soon as we can on social and email. I demand a thorough investigation. Thank you very much for your understanding and patience. Team Oh, you're welcome. Team now, I feel bad for 
that thorough investigation comment. Yeah, it does happen quite a lot. We just talked about that in our physical media update. Again, here's just another one, um, which I don't know about the color space on the entire Blu-ray release, how that got messed up, but, you know, a quick blip of a shot that reoccurs over another shot. I mean, sure, I, I guess it's, if it's fast enough, maybe it's easy to miss, but Arrow's a, a pretty big company. I don't know how they're... Not catching some of this. Zavi's a big company. Ah, uh, good point. Zavi Zavi. Is. Zavi cares nothing about oversight. Man. Do you know if there was any disrecalls recalls on Carlito's web? Absolutely not. My movie came out brilliant. Fresh out the box. No issues. Fresh out the box. Well, you had an issue with your steel book. I did. It was dented. Listen, listen, is that my fault? Or is that the 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 mailman's fault? I don't know, Carlito. You, you I, I don't know. I don't know either. Could have been my fault. In that case, I apologize. Thank you. Thank you. I do appreciate that. Oh, but, you're welcome. But if you did get Henry Portrait of a Serial Killer, you did pre-order it. If it's in your hand right now, hold on to it. Hold you're, on you're gonna be to getting it, it replaced. Hold on. You're going to be getting it replaced. Hold on for one more day. Hold on for one more day. And lastly... And more to the point, the whole reason why you've showed up here today, Carlito, other than to, of course, plug Carlito's Way and Carlito's Way Rise to Power. I believe these are sold out. They are. They're currently sold out. <laughs> They're currently sold out. Um, but no, I'm popular, man. I'm a popular guy. Stand up popular guy. You are. But let's get to the point. There's actually one very special uh, audience member out there. Oh, yeah. He's a very special very special audience member goes by the name of mark we are indebted to this man is, is it his birthday uh, what are we doing <laughs> we found out that it's mark's birthday how is mark's birthday I know. and we want to give him a very special shout out i have no idea how old mark is mark could be 30 he could be 60 oh i believe i sold him cocaine around 1978 in canada how old was he then? Ah, yeah, one of those faces. At could, least 18. Could, At least 18, right? You don't oh, know that, yeah. I don't sell blow to minors, man. No, never. Not not back then. I do now. But Rise to Power didn't work out so well, you know. Uh, well, Mark is a very special, as we mentioned, audience member. He has been with us since the very beginning of this channel. One of the very first people yes. that clicked that subscribe button and gave us a chance. Decided, you know what? I'm going to go back and watch these two idiots again, and maybe one more time. I'm going to go out on a limb here, Matt, and I'm saying he provided us with inspiration. He has provided us with inspiration countless times. And he provided that chap you like to hang out with with two gifts. Two gifts. Limited edition Arrow True Romance and the limited edition special edition collector's edition Short Circuit 2. It, it, it is worth, I guess, mentioning that one more time. We've brought this up so many times on several videos that we've put up, but in case you're new or you haven't been keeping up on the, the deep lore that is the Blue News and Reviews channel. Deep lore. One of the, not first, but pretty early in the channel, True Romance, Special Edition, Collector's Edition, Zavi release, Arrow release, all that good stuff had came out. Yes. And the most sought after one, Russ missed out on. I did, Matt. I and, did. And if you want to go back and look at the thorough meltdown that Russ had about missing out on that, you I can damn go and check out that damn near lost my... Oh. He damn near lost his mind. He did. You can go back and check out that video and see his thoughts on why he shouldn't have missed out on it and how there should have been more and et cetera. That's and right. It was a very dark time for this channel. Very dark time. But Mark saved the day. And you know what? I'm going to fill you guys in on a little bit of trivia. Matt, did you know I auditioned for Short Circuit? I did not know that, no. no. Oh, I did, I did. And what, for what role? Johnny Five. Johnny Five. You were going to be Johnny Five. Oh, I, I had a hot take on the character as well. Would you Would you like to hear it? Can we hear it? I went in. I looked Fisher Stevens directly in the eye. And I said, You mighty corn motherfucking snowblower. And the director went in a different direction, but... I nailed that audition. You, it sounds like you did. I wonder, are there deleted scenes of that on the Blu-ray that, that Mark gifted to you? There should be. There I should didn't be. sign off on him because I did not like the way Fisher Stevens treated me. I didn't like Fisher Stevens portraying someone from another ethnicity. 
I did not find that fair. Uh, I would have like walked out in protest as well. You would never do anything like that. Never. You are an artist. Never. And if you're going to do it, you better die twice in that movie. And <laughs> thank you, Mark, for saving this channel. That's right. Happy birthday, Mark. No disassemble. No disassemble. And for those that are wondering why so many Short Circuit 2 references, I believe. They're not. They know. Real that, ones know that we covered Short Circuit really, 2 when no knows. one was covering Short Circuit 2. And no one continues to cover it. We covered it. And that's why Mark and many others like you probably have stuck around to this day. But mainly, Mark, thank you for everything that you have brought to this channel. We really appreciate it. Happy birthday. Mark, look me in my eyes right now. You are so beautiful to Dave. Happy birthday. That wraps it up, man. I don't know. What else should I say? No, that's perfect. Thank you, Carlito. Thank you for coming out to wish happy birthday to Mark. I know he means that much to you. That's why. From do you, the bottom of my heart. Uh, do you have anything else you wanted to plug before, we, before mm. you got out of here? Carlito's way, rise to power, coming at the end of the year in 12K. Happy birthday. Let's jump into some physical media news. But before we do that, our good friend Johnny Depp has been in the news for us. And for what? Not really for anything that great. Kind of, It's kind of been a little bit funny. Um, I mean, nobody wants to be in the news for being on trial for any of this crap. But, I mean, I guess he's not the one that's on trial. She's on trial for lying, basically. Isn't that what the whole situation is? Honestly, I don't follow it. <laughs> I mean, we know he's in From court. what I've gathered, that's what it seems like. Yeah. And from what I've gathered, it appears that she's not coming across particularly well. No. Which no. is which good. Good. Yeah, she's coming yeah. across like... Abuse can go both yeah. ways, so let's... Yeah. I mean, if that's the truth. Yeah. So essentially, she, she deserves to go down. She came out saying that he was completely abusive to her and all this kind of stuff. He lost a ton of roles as a result. He came out with a bunch of information and recordings and things that kind of contradicted a lot about what she was saying. People started feeling a little bit badly about that. And now they're going through litigation. I think now correct me if I'm wrong. I don't I actually don't know 100 percent, but that it's not to decide whether or not she abused him or he abused her. It's whether or not she lied about saying all these things about him that she did, that therefore yeah. got him to lose all of his opportunities. I was about to say, I thought it was more along the lines of like a defamation yes. suit. Yes, yeah. so nothing, nothing's going to come out that say, yes, Johnny, you did abuse her. Because they are already her. divorced yeah. and everything. Yeah. Because I read about how some of that settlement money she pledged to give to abuse charities and they've seen none of it yeah. to this day to this day now and, and a lot of the things do a crazy thing too i read her actual parents support johnny depp <laughs> yeah i mean she, her ex-lovers it's just yeah no no one's saying he's not crazy or not like you know had problems with alcohol and drugs and everything else but to kind of slander this dude and basically kind of ruin his entire life to say that he was you know, like an abuser towards you when in fact yeah, he was targeted, he was targeted. And maybe there was a little bit on your end that is now coming to light. That wasn't before. And I think that's nah, when you shit in someone's on. bed, there's a lot on your end. Yeah, <laughs> there's a lot. And he's actually been a little bit kind of funny throughout some of this trial. I've seen some of the clips. They have a couple of highlights. They have some of like his funnier moments where he's kind of like giving it back to her attorney a little bit. Cause he's being a little bit of a showboat. Um, it's, it's a circus no matter what, but Thought it was maybe an opportunity for us to kind of talk about just Johnny Depp in general, his career, what he's done. Um, I know we've talked about just not even that long ago, um, Pirates of the Caribbean, and you're mm -hmm. saying that that is one of his, if not his, defining role or the thing that people will remember him the most for. I don't know. I mean, it's uh, it's not my personal, not personal, but favorite. in general, yeah. that's like the feeling. Right? That's what everyone worldwide would recognize yeah. him as first. Sure. And I like and I like how he's giving Disney the finger now. Saying basically, like, I don't know if they came to him and said, hey, would you come back? But he's come out and said, I will never work for Disney again. Good. Like, based on what they did to me, essentially. Good. Even though. You know who should have done that was uh, Guardians James of the Galaxy. Gunn. Yeah. James Gunn should have done that. Yeah, I was going to say the same thing. Yeah. Yep. James Gunn should have done that. But nah, you guys keep playing these games and this stupid culture we're in is never going to change. Nope. Yeah. So I don't know if Johnny <clears throat> Depp will ever be back on top necessarily, but maybe he'll have his name cleared a little bit, which is kind of cool. Um, but are you a big Johnny Depp fan, Russ? Uh, I guess I am. 
I, I have to lean. He, yes, I guess I am. Okay. I guess I am. Watch, we're going to run through his filmography here, and there's a lot to like and a lot to love. So, yes. Is there a point where it starts to taper off? It starts to taper off once he once Jack Sparrow took over, but I was never somebody who was mad at Jack Sparrow taking off. Uh, he did that his way. I, you can't be mad at that. I'm no. surprised Disney let it go. Yeah, they rolled the dice. They didn't want to let it go. Uh, they wanted to fire him, but I believe it was Bruckheimer who stuck up for him, mm-hmm. and uh, it ended up making them billions and billions and billions of dollars. Yeah, for them to shun him over accusations no that's that's a really good point like when you look at his whole filmography like all of these roles that he's taken it's always like a character that mm-hmm. he's sort of portraying like and there's he always, always brings, a character and oh, he, like yeah. you said he puts himself into that and 110 percent it's not like disney said here's the template for jack sparrow just you sit in that role oh, he no. created what that was disney didn't From know what that role everything was. everything yeah. anyone loves about that character it's all johnny depp that yep. was not in the script that was not direct like that was him yeah and sure. he has done that throughout his career sometimes it doesn't work i'm not trying to say he's flawless for me the, his career it, it just got too commercial he couldn't go backwards i yeah. think after that yeah and it, it, it's one of those situations kind of like I, i'll say about robert de niro or even bruce willis is that you gave me so many gems and now you get to kind of cash out live in the sunset yeah live a life granted it didn't work out (laughs) to live in the sunset but i mean i'm not mad at him it's like dude you've done all the artsy stuff and you continue to do it in the middle of all these movies to like i said varying degrees of success but man i I gotta give him his flowers he's done he's done enough If, if any actor had his resume Even before Pirates, like that's an admirable resume. Yeah, and he's a household name. He'll always be remembered. He'll always be. He's a pretty boy. He could have just gone on and did bullshit, and he chose. He consciously chose art over. Let me just be the next it. You know, whatever. Uh, Yeah, I dig him. I dig him. Me too. Um, and and I guess when we go through, I'm not sure where my point of falling off is but i've seen a couple of random like ones too that are in his filmography that you know he's not even that known for maybe like went under the radar but i enjoyed Tusk. them and enjoyed him in was he in that <laughs> he is. was he in that yeah he is yeah no um i was thinking more <laughs> the 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 ninth gate and i think there was like one other one that i saw that was a little wild for him but um a nightmare on elm street his very first movie mm. ever uh, I know that's a favorite of yours. I mean, he's in it for it's just a, briefly. Nightmare on Elm Street is one of my favorite movies of all time. But if I'm going to do a Johnny Depp retrospective, I mean, I'm not going to focus on Nightmare on Elm Street. Where are you going to start? Well, well, let me tell you something. What's funny about Nightmare on Elm Street is Johnny Depp didn't want to be an actor. He moved out to Hollywood to be a rock star. You can and tell. What, that's what it looks yeah, like. Yeah. What happened was I, I even want to say it was Nicolas Cage. I could be wrong. But it was another actor friend of his who was driving to the audition for Nightmare on Elm Street and was basically like, dude, you should tag along. You should try it. Johnny Depp goes in with the, his friend. They audition. Uh, Wes Craven's basically he didn't blow anyone out of the <laughs> he, yeah. did, he didn't knock it out the park or anything. He wasn't that interested. But it was Wes Craven's daughter who was present that day, kind of tugged on her dad on the side and said, Dad, you, you got to go with him. Hmm. And, you know, Wes Craven was kind of like, why? He's gorgeous. Oh, yeah. He that's, was. that's what Wes Craven's daughter said. Good and looking that's dude. basically what got his start. So we have Wes Craven's daughter to thank for Johnny Depp. Thank you, Wes Craven's daughter. And Amber Heard, you have Wes Craven's daughter <laughs> to thank. Yes. For your failed attempt at extortion. And your paycheck that you're going to get every month. Yeah. No, uh, she's going to donate it all, dude. Yeah. All right, so let's go. Uh, Nightmare on Elm Street, Nightmare Nightmare on Elm Street, great film. Yeah, we might as well start with Cry Baby because I mean Platoon, he's damn near an extra. Yeah, I mean, Platoon's a great film, but you know, Cry Baby, I've never seen. It's great, and it's the first movie that he did to kind of break the mold. He was known for Twenty One Jump Street at that time, and instead of like I said, he could have gone on and did some bullshit Hollywood blockbuster, but he chose to work with John Waters. Mm-hmm. I mean, come on. That right there speaks volumes of where he wanted to go and what he wanted his career and output to be. Uh, 
Yeah, and then never fo- saw it. No, okay. I never saw it. I was going to say, and then followed up with another director, Tim Burton. It's like these are two mm-hmm. directors back to back that are like. And this is Tim Burton yeah. before, yeah, like Planet of the Apes and Charlie and the Child. Right. This is like when Tim Burton still showed a ton of promise. It's crazy uh, to me that, that Edward Scissorhands was so early on because I feel like I just when I saw that movie, I feel like I knew him. Maybe it was from Twenty One Jump Street. I, I don't know what it I was, never but, saw Twenty One Jump. Street. Yeah, I don't know if that's what it was, but he just seemed so familiar to me. Not like some unknown, basically, which I guess you could still consider him that at this point. Ed, Edward Scissorhands, an unknown. And you know what's funny now that you bring that up. Nightmare on Elm Street and Edward Scissorhands had to have been the first movies I'd seen. Because I saw Edward Scissorhands in the theater. Yeah, yeah. And I was eight. Yeah. That must have been one of the first things that I, you know, recognized right. him in. And, and it's a great movie. It's a great movie. He's, I mean, that amazing is, in it. That is the quintessential Tim Burton film. I think if, if Tim Burton passed away and someone did an autopsy on his brain, if you just cracked his brain open, I picture... It's that colorful cul-de-sac with a gothic unoccupied yeah, house, house on a mountain, like everything with him looking like Robert Smith living in it. I mean, yeah. like I, that is Tim Burton's psyche. Yeah. It's his, to me, that's his most personal movie and it's full of love. It's, it's a beautiful movie, honestly. And I feel like Johnny Depp is incredible. In it. Oh yeah. He, he knew it. He understood it. He definitely understood it. And I don't it. know if many people in 1990 would have understood that. A lot of younger actors. It's, he had yeah. the rock. He had the music, the weirdo mentality. It's nearly silent too. I mean, he only His says very few, yeah. few words. I mean, and what he, when he does say words, it's, you know, it's powerful. And when he's just emoting and just like doing his, his Edward oh, Scissorhands yeah, yeah, thing, yeah. just operating those scissors. Yeah. It's just like, what a performance. It's awesome. It's like almost as uh, good as like, uh, Bruce Willis and look who's talking close. Anyway, going on to Freddy's dead, say what you will about Freddy's dead. I'm a big nightmare on Elm street guy. I enjoy it. I love that. He came back for it. He didn't have to No, He did as guy on TV. Yeah. He's actually, it's a drug commercial. It's an, it's the, this is your brain. This is your brain on drugs. Yeah. And it's Johnny Depp doing that. And then Freddie hits him with the pan and he falls down he falls and down. that's it. <laughs> he came back just that's for a great. quick little cameo. That's great. Credited as Oprah noodle mantra great name interesting um i don't know anything about arizona dream i never saw benny and june benny um, and june's good but i i know of it i like uh mary elizabeth master no yeah. mary elizabeth i almost said uh, what's her name? mary stewart masterson. mary stewart masterson i actually think you would like that it, you know what's funny because i know what a big fan of some kind of wonderful you yes. are this even has kind of like a well it's not a love triangle because aiden quinn is her brother but it's that same sort of like weird romance but yeah i think you would kind of like kinda it spe- i could watch benny and june and some kind of wonderful back to back and get kind of like a similar they're different films but not completely different vibes yeah hmm. it's well, cute it's a cute movie it's cute I'll yeah i can remember that i can see the trailer vividly him like dancing with like little sausages oh, or yeah, something that on, damn like, proclaimers sticks. song oh yes that's right the proclaimer <laughs> song that probably got bigger than that movie did um yeah it did but What's Eating Gilbert Grape is one of my personal favorites of his filmography. I agree with you. It's a great film. I'd say easily a 9 out of 10, maybe more if I yeah. rewatched it. Yeah, I think it's a beautiful movie. I always have. Yep. And I love the way he plays it. He plays it and he's internalizing it. He knew what to do. Great cast. DiCaprio knocked it out the oh, park. Yeah. yeah, for sure. Good for DiCaprio. Yeah, definitely. It's quirky, but not in a... like annoying way no it's no. quirky but it's like no these are real people it's real it's a real they're going through real struggles even him like he doesn't know who he is who he's meant to be he's just serving people mm-hmm. Juliette lewis is even great in yeah. it i mean yeah that's a great movie it dude. is it feels very real you're right like that town all the actors oh um, dude and john c how... riley and crispin glover yeah. are hysterical they are they are roles. E- everyone just feels you know like yeah. a l- somewhat hopeless somewhat you know just like stuck somehow like you said not knowing where am I going? What is this life? You know, it kind of is Dude, even the relationship with him and Mary Steenberg in it. Yeah. Like that could have been so weird or off putting or, but like I liked her yeah. in it. Did it make it. sense? She it made did. sense. Why she was kind of messed up a little bit. Exactly. Makes sense. Everyone exactly. kind of makes sense in it. That's a very well made film. It is. And his performance too is being, we just talked about all these characters that he portrays. He's just like a guy. He's almost the most normal one in he the movie. Is. He is. Juliette Lewis is yeah. a little bit more hippie-ish and out there. The yeah. mother has her issues. Leonardo yeah. DiCaprio Obviously is mentally so handicapped. Yeah. Like, yeah, he's the he's the normal one in this yep. almost. He you is. know, normal. Normal. Yeah. So if I had to put him this in a top five, 
Johnny Depp performance or movies for me, that definitely would be in there. I don't know where, but uh, for yeah, sure. it, it yeah, it probably would be in mine as well if I had to. Ed Wood is one that I feel like I've been sleeping on for way too long and I should watch. Great I've movie. never seen it. Great movie. It's one of those movies where you, you probably heard everyone. Oh, that's Tim Burton's best film and all that. That's one of the cases where the masses are, are right. Yeah. Is this <laughs> I, I is his mean, best film? It's as far as filmmaking, I'd say yes. And what about for Johnny Depp then as the Great. titular Ed Wood? Perfect. No one else could have done it. No one else could have done it. I can't picture anyone else doing it. And he's great. Martin Landau is fantastic as Bela Lugosi. Yeah. You know, he won the he Oscar won, for I think. it. Yeah, yeah I was going to say he, he won, I remember. And, uh, and I think what you'll like about it, if you dug in, is that it is, it's, a, it's more of a tale of friendship with two eccentrics. Because by this is Bela Lugosi at the end of his career mm -hmm. as an addict dying. And, you know, Ed Wood's using him for the name recognition, basically. Yeah. But they form this weird little bond. And, uh, oh, dude, you got Bill Murray being weird in I it. I know Bill Murray's in it, yeah. Yeah, dude, it's it's good. Check it out, man. It's a great movie. If I had to rank Tim Burton movies, I'd probably put Edward Scissorhands above it just because that feels to me like complete, <laughs> no holds barred, yeah. Tim Burton. This is a true story. This is a biopic, so he's brought that. I love that they did it in black and white. Yeah. I mean, it's, dude, it's good. It's good. Has that ever been released on any way, shape or form? In a good I own the collector's edition Blu-ray and it came with like a decent amount of features, but it was nothing to yeah. like, you know, shout huh. about. Gotcha. Yeah. That's one I know I've definitely slept on for a long time and I would really like to see, especially Check it as out. you guys are mentioning and you are mentioning that it's one of his Tim Burton's best films and maybe even Johnny Depp's best performances. Perhaps that would definitely be in Johnny Depp's okay. top five. What about Don Juan to Marco? Never saw it. Is this like the prequel to, yes. um, to, <laughs> to Pirates of the Caribbean? Is this where he's kind of getting his sea legs figured out where, you know, before he got his, uh, before he got his, uh, Jack Sparrow pirate. This one, I believe he took on only because he got to work with Marlon Brando. I don't think he gave a shit about this movie. The greatest lover in the world. Clad in a cape and domino mask, DeMarco undergoes psychiatric treatment with Marlon Brando. Okay, so not nearly as... Well. Who wants to go through psychiatric, psychiatric treatment with Marlon Brando? You're going to come out worse. Yeah, so I never, I never <laughs> saw this either, but this is what he followed up. Uh, hey, man, it worked well for Brian Adams. What song was Don Juan DeMarco? Matt, don't act like you didn't grow up watching VH1. Oh, now I remember it. And, <laughs> and Faye Dunaway. Hmm. And she um, was on the cover. Why did there, I think dude? he was a pirate in this? See, that's how deep I got messed up. Jack Sparrow has permeated the culture. You I think know. he's a pirate in every movie. I really did. What, what I think, am I thinking of like Captain Ron? That's uh... <laughs> That was Escape from New York Part 2. <laughs> uh, Nick of Time with <laughs> Christopher Walken. I actually was always kind of interested in watching this. Uh, and yeah, I... Because uh, you know the whole... I remember the trailer vividly. Well, I but. mean, it has talent behind it. And you know the whole kind of like conceit of it is that it takes place in real time. Yeah, yeah. It takes yeah. place in real but time. I, thought, I just never time. never watched it in the 90s. But I always kind of had a, a little vague interest little in vague checking interest? it out. Checking it out, yeah. I never saw it. Just the trailer. Let's get to one that may shock some people donnie brasco donnie brasco also i have not seen this movie i've seen it and i'm not a big fan of it why not johnny depp really <laughs> he's not good at it he's good he does what he can do for me i look at johnny depp i see a musician i see an artist i see a dude who wears you know bracelets, bracelets. and crazy jewelry and he drinks wine and all that I don't see a cop going undercover. Hmm. And like, even in his eyes in this movie, I just don't buy it. I feel like any mafioso would have like saw through that immediately. He just doesn't have He's that. He's so much gravitas. of a pretty boy. It's not even his looks. He's, it's just his demeanor. To me, he doesn't pull off. I'm not intimidated by Johnny Depp. Let's he, put it that and way. And he's never been in a movie up to that point where he was intimidating. None of no, the, these movies. No, he's just no, like a regular guy. No. He's Ed Wood. He's and that's Eddie what I'm trying to say. It's like it, he doesn't like ruin the movie or anything. I don't want to put it out there. And it, this is more personal, I think. It's just I don't see him as I, I I just personally don't buy him as that. And when the whole film is revolving around you gotta sell it, you know, you're not even acting as that. You're acting as that you're faking it. <laughs> you're yeah. undercover as that. It's like, yeah. well, now we have so many layers I'm not buying. 
there's moments in it, dude. It's Al Pacino. It's a gangster movie. How's I can watch it. Michael Madsen's in it. And yeah, he's good. I, I mean, like, th- there's yeah, there's a whole scene with Madsen. They're like cutting up a body and shit. I think with the chains. It's been a while since I've seen it. Is Pacino bringing the heat? Pacino always brings the heat. Always man. brings that heat. He always brings the heat. Literally, like my biggest takeaway from Donnie Brasco is a scene where Pacino can't. <laughs> open what is he he can't ah, fuck it i don't even remember but he's like open sesame i don't know it always made me laugh Uh, laugh. so so don't see donnie brasco so i don't need to go see that i Uh, should see ed wood but not donnie see it see it just if you feel the same way about johnny depp that i do where you cannot buy him as intimidating yeah you're gonna have a problem with it similar to what i had well, he wasn't very intimidating in Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas. He's great in it. He is pretty great and what just wild. Like, I don't know even how to put what that movie. Like, I don't even know what to say about that movie. He now, nailed Hunter S. Thompson. Yeah, he nailed did. it. He just and think about it. Bill Murray did a portrayal of Hunter S. Thompson in the past, and Depp knocked that. Say what you will about the movie. I know it's a love it or hate it kind of movie, but it's he wild. knocked it out the park. He did. No, he definitely did. Like you said, in almost every one of these descriptions, you're, you've said he gets it. He understands mm-hmm. it. He goes in and he is what it needs to be. He knows exactly what job and how to do that job. And he definitely knew how to act this part for sure. Funny story. I met Alex Cox, who was the original. He did the original draft of the screenplay, and he's still credited as an executive producer, but he basically got shut off. He didn't want Johnny Depp. <laughs> who did he want? Man, I forget hmm. who he said at the time. Wow, I forget. I wish I remembered what he said. I don't but know. yeah, and, and, but he did. He didn't say anything mean about Johnny Depp. He said I met him, and it was cool at all. It just we it went different directions. Yeah. And this is too like I've I've only recently seen this movie for the first time, and it definitely was probably more than what I was uh, bargaining for. But and I don't even really I I don't even know like I said what to say about it in general. But whenever I think of Johnny Depp and his filmography. That this one always just comes to mind. Other than, like other than Edward Scissorhands and ones that I'm more close with, like just for some reason, this movie just screams like Johnny Depp to me. Like this is just something mm-hmm. that always comes to mind. This one in particular, not Donnie Brasco or mm-hmm. Nick of Time. Like I said, it it kind of has a rock and roll element to it yeah. with Hunter S. Thompson working for Rolling Stone. There's a drug element to it. Like this is, yeah. this is Johnny Depp. <laughs> Benicio del Toro. He's funny in it. He's great. He's great. Now I did see the Ninth Gate. I did, which was, I did not. Which was a movie that came out right after. And I don't even think I really realized it was um, a Roman Polanski movie. Uh, but this is just like a really bizarre ass movie where he's like a basically like a book collector. And he figures out like he's like after these really ancient tomes that once they're all collected, then some gate to hell maybe opens up. And it's basically it sounds like national treasure. Him trying to figure that out, whether that's true or not. Meanwhile, shady people are like on his trail as he's trying to figure it out. He can't tell who's with him, who's against him. Is this real? Is it not? You know, and yeah. I don't know. It was, it was wild. It was interesting. I don't know. Just, it was probably like on TV and I watched it, but I definitely remember enjoying it. It was a little, it's, it's not, it's not like one of his staples. That's for sure. But it's something. The ninth gate for us, the ninth gate, 1999. This is where we start to get a little, yeah, 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 we're we're running we're we're, we're, we're beginning run. to run out of steam here. Let's, there's there's a couple hits left. Yeah, folks. let's let's jump to Sleepy Hollow. I'm a fan of Sleepy Hollow. Are you? I am. I enjoyed that. I think that's probably the last really good Tim Burton movie. I've never seen it. And I think also Christopher Walken. Am I wrong? You're yeah, right. You're right. Yeah. He, he's the headless horseman. Yes. Yes. Um, I'll say this about Sleepy Hollow. I kind of view it now in hindsight as the testing ground for Captain Jack Sparrow. In that it's a period piece. He's playing Ichabod Crane. It's a, you know, he's the medic detective, whatever, trying to figure out what's going on. He's, it's again, it's a period piece and he's playing it kind of modern. He's playing it with, he's, he's, ang- he's anxious. Mm-hmm. He's always nervous. He's not a hero. Think Jack Burton in Big Trouble in Little China yeah. without the bravado, though. Okay. And like I said, to me, it was just a weird take. Anyone else would have played that completely straight. He was showing the signs of, well, just because it's a period piece, I can still be eccentric and weird. And fun, yeah. Yeah, and I love that about it. And it's it's a fun movie. Not perfect, not like a masterpiece or anything, but worth watching. But worth watching. For yeah, sure. I've, I've never seen it. Um I don't know I don't know why I stopped seeing certain Tim Burton movies after a certain point, I guess. Honestly, that's the one you can stop on, I'd say. Really? Christina Ricci? Hmm. 
Interesting. Yeah. And I know he got, or this movie got praised. Did he get something for this? This Chocolat movie that was following that? I mean, I, he doesn't have an Oscar, so I don't know. I think this got a number of accolades, including Maybe many for its screenplay, direction, acting, and music. It, it, it received five nominations. Benoche won. Oh, oh I, guess, I guess it, it just got a bunch of nominations. I heard, Chocolat. It, I heard it was good. My mother enjoyed it. Well, it's sinfully delicious. <laughs> I I know that it's sinfully delicious, right. and and this is a is it in French? Johnny Depp is a Frenchman, probably. He okay. lives in France. He's France. He's from France, so you never saw this movie. No. Nah. Next one, Blow. I've seen Blow. Yep. Good movie. Very good movie. Ironically, watching this Amber Heard stuff, right down to him having the ponytail in the yeah. courtroom, <laughs> yeah. it reminds me of the end of Blow with him and Penelope Cruz, yeah. where it's like she's just taking advantage of him in this movie, ruining him. He even has that like ponytail, ponytail. looking old, and I know. It, he looks like George Jung in, in, the, uh, in this trial a bit, and yeah. it's kind of sad. Kinda but sad. I, I think Blow... Blow didn't quite hit the heights of greatness that like a Goodfellas or anything in this genre of crime films and all that, yeah. but it definitely did not fall short. It's definitely really good. It's compelling. I enjoyed it's it. It's compelling. Yeah, yeah. I, I've seen it more than once, dude. It holds up. Uh, and rest in peace, man. Ted Demi passed away like immediately. He might have passed away right before it came out, hmm. either right before it came out or immediately after it came out, but... Ended up being his last movie, and I know you're a big fan of The Ref. I love The Ref. And mm-hmm. yeah, no, and Yo! MTV Raps. And I love Yo! MTV Raps. Ed Lover, Dr. Dre, the original Dr. Dre. Um, there's two Dr. Dre's. Mm-hmm. The original. I don't know if he would have been the original, though. His doctorate? Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, who got their PhD first? Who got it first? We're going to have to find that out. But um, Penelope Cruz, I kind of forgot for a second there that she was in this movie. Yeah, I've only yeah. seen this movie one time, and it was a little while ago. Uh, but I, I also really enjoyed it. That's right, Ray Liotta. Ray Liotta is good in it too, and, and Paul Rubens. Yeah, uh, he's barely in. He's it, barely but in, it, but cool. I liked him in it. Yeah, it's cool to see him pop up in little yeah. things like that. I like when Burton does that, throws him a bone here and there every once in a while. Um, from Hell's good. From Hell, another one that I did not good. see. Hughes Brothers, man, and uh, it's good. It's good. Is it? I believe it's a comic adaptation too. If I, I'm, I might, when people ask me what are my favorite comic book movies, I'm going to start saying Same from hell. hell in my top five. It is. It's very well made, dude. Very well made. And he's good in it again. Like he, I said, consistent. He, yeah. And he's the, like a detective trying to find Jack Ripper, Jack the Ripper. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Heather Graham. Mm-hmm. I did not. She's a prostitute who, you know, that's like, yeah. Yeah. Does he find Jack the Ripper at the end? Go watch the movie. Man. Go watch. He the finds movie, a whole asshole. lot of opium to smoke throughout the movie. Oh, that's probably what they paid him in. It's <laughs> it's real opium. He didn't get a check. They just, Johnny, show up on set, hit the pipe. <laughs> hit the pipe. Uh, gotcha. <laughs> I, was, I was born for this. <laughs> <laughs> that was his last movie before Pirates of the Caribbean. Wow. So like yeah. pretty much everything before that, and then here we are. Now we're at Pirates of the Caribbean yeah. and his. Let's His get it. Career we, we've, exploded. Yeah, and we've said everything. Jack Sparrow, great, one, uh, iconic, up there with a Hannibal Lecter or something. Yeah. Nobody else could play that. There, there's nothing else to be said. And he did it his way. I have nothing but respect. Say what you will about the movies. They fall apart after the first one. But the first one is a, is a great adventure romp, uh, Indiana Jones style film. It's great. The first one. I still have yet to see it, and I'm sad that a lot. Watch of the it with reviews, your son, man. I know. I kind watch of, it with your son. I, 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 I'm sad that a lot of the reviews for the 4K release were not that great because yeah. that would have been one to pick up. And then it's a watch fun together. family movie because it gets scary enough. Like there's, it, it looks cool in parts, yeah. even as an adult. But it's you know it walks that line. It's yeah. not like terrifying, right? But it's enough to where if you're a kid, you're gonna be a little off put by it, but. You're going to like it. You're not going to be completely shaken by the experience. Yeah. Yeah, no, I definitely, it's another one. That's, I, I guess, my takeaway so far, Ed Wood and Pirates of the Caribbean, the original, to watch. For, for you. For Johnny, for Johnny Depp. Yeah, for me, for sure. Honestly, even Pirates, I don't know. I, I just know, I think your son would enjoy it. So I'm like, that thing. would be a win-win if you go in that direction. Not I'm not sure. going to sit here and be like, hey, get with your son and watch Fear and Loathing and see what he thinks. 
Yeah, it's a it's a family affair. I get it. Um, and then the same the same year he did Once Upon a Time in Mexico, which I did not like at all. I did not see. I did not like. I mean, I'm a huge Desperado fan, and when they were going to do another follow up to Desperado, it's like that's pretty cool. But then the whole the whole thing about Desperado is Desperado, Antonio Banderas, Salma Hayek, yeah. and they're like not really in it. He's the main character basically, plus a whole other like slew of people. This this plot that is so convoluted and in and out that it's like Desperado works because it's simple. Mm -hmm. Like it's such a simple, great action movie and that's, and it's like here and then it's gone. It's amazing. It's perfect Mm -hmm. for what it is. And it's got some cameos that are like fun and whatever it might be, but it's not like a spy thriller. It's not like a political, you know, drama. It's like none of this stuff. And this movie tries to be all this weird thing that it really doesn't look like Desperado. Now, Johnny Depp, he's pretty good in it, but I feel like the movie's soured because of what you think it's going to be and what it ends up being, and it just doesn't work as a whole. He's got a couple of good one-liners in it. He's got a couple of good moments in it, but in general, it's just not a very good movie. And I, that's that's exactly what I drew from the trailer when it came out, was that it felt convoluted even in the trailer. And yeah. as you said, I'm a fan of Desperado. I, yeah. I've seen El Mariachi, and for some reason, I just skipped this one. It just didn't, it didn't look anything like that world to me. No, smart. Very smart. <laughs> yeah, and then everybody pretty much told me it was meh at yeah. best. Yeah, very smart so. that you did that. Um, a couple, at, of, a couple yeah, of randos here. Secret, this, Secret Window, The Libertine, Finding Neverland. I've heard great things about The Libertine, to be honest. What about Finding Neverland? I heard good things about that. It is good. I've oh, seen you've it. seen that? Mm-hmm. And how was he in it in later, later points of his career, post Jack Sparrow he's, for the first time? He's good. But, I mean, it's just a very straightforward kind of family, you know... I'm befriending the boy, and he's inspiring me, right, Alice in Wonderland. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, yeah, it's good. It's good. Willy Wonka? I don't hate his performance in this. Okay. I don't. Now, (laughs) of course, Gene Wilder owns this role, but this should have never been made. That's that's, that's, that's the problem. I like the direction you're taking It was never going to win. You're I don't care if Johnny Daniel Day Lewis could have been Willy Wonka. <laughs> it's not going to win. And the original Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory is just so ingrained in everyone's childhood in pop culture. You're not topping the songs. You're not topping and even the kid actors you're not topping. You might be able to top Grandpa Joe. He was kind of a dick in that movie, but everything else you're not topping. And like I said, it was doomed to fail. Its main problem is that it exists and no one can judge it without bias. Agreed. But his take, that kind of weird Michael Jackson-esque, it could have worked. If there was no other film adaptation, it actually follows Dahl's book more than the 71 or 72 film did. Yeah. But like I said, it's you're remaking a classic amongst classics. Yeah, I mean, you're everything you said. Finally, uh, you came around uh, is correct. This movie just doesn't even need to be to no. be made. It doesn't need to exist. It's so hard to even look at this movie and not compare it to literally yeah, anything yeah. else. Unless you haven't seen the original, then you could maybe go into that one and like that one or like like you said, the performance is a different take. He didn't try to redo the same thing. He you know tried what's to, he tried to make it his own. You know what's funny? Um, my stepson has seen both and. He prefers the original. Mine as well. But let me, I can even give you a counter example to this though. He's seen both of the witches. If we're going to stay on roll of doll, he couldn't stand the older one. He was like, that looks too old, which is weird because that was 1990 and Willy Wonka was like 1971. Yeah. He preferred the new one with yeah. Anne Hathaway. Yeah. He, my son also <laughs> likes the original, but I also think he likes Gene Wilder more than the, than this performance as well. It's just, it's just like, really bizarre you know it is it's just, but it's like, like extra bizarre it is but i gotta throw him a bone again what is he supposed to go in there and do a gene wilder right. impression right. then no. we all would have really tore him a new asshole and gene, I mean, gene wilder danced the line of eccentric and sweet and a little mysterious and maybe even scary at the same time but there was just this air that he's kind of a normal just yeah, kind of guy, guy that just walks to the beat of a different drum but like willy wonka johnny depp version is like just on a different 
like spectrum. He's like you said, bizarre. Mm. He's like a Michael Jackson like cologne or. And like something. I said, I feel like if there was no previous film iteration, maybe his performance in this would have been looked at as yeah. decent or interesting, or maybe just at least a more acceptable. We don't live in that no world, one. so we'll never know. Uh, yeah, exactly, exactly. Corpse Bride voice role only for more more Tim Burton stuff, and then he did all the you know, two more Pirates of the Caribbean movies back to back. Then Sweeney Todd after that another. Um, Tim Burton. So he's been he's been hanging on with Tim Burton. I mean, for a while. I've seen some of these movies, but I, I'm, I wasn't passionate about any of them enough to talk about. I'll say Tusk is better than its reputation. Wow. So that Tusk is all the way down in 2014, Russ. We're only at 2006. Oh, I know, dude. But I do you have anything to say about any I mean, of these films? No. I mean, if just Public going, Enemies, in my no. opinion, is my least favorite Michael Mann movie that I've ever seen. And again, it kind of has that problem of, I don't buy Johnny Depp as John Dillinger. I don't buy yeah. him as a gangster. I don't buy him as intimidating. So yeah. And like the dark shadows and the lone ranger, yeah, the Tonto character. Watching. Yeah. It's, I mean, he's, he's doing characters still. I mean, these are characters, but they're not, but he hit know. that man, Jack Sparrow just, yeah, dude, you don't go back from that. No, it's tough. You don't go back. I feel like he tries, but like, he dude, does. once he you did. hit that stratosphere, you're, it's over. Yeah, I remember one of the last times I saw him looking like he was trying for something, maybe Oscar contender ish, was when he was like Whitey Bulger. What was that movie? Black uh, Mass. Black Mass. Yeah, like I thought, okay, in that trailer, maybe he's trying for some uh, something more critically acclaimed for himself, but I don't know that that really went anywhere either. See, I don't even think he goes for that. You don't like think to, so? to me, like when you discuss Will Smith, it's obvious when he's going for an Oscar movie, even DiCaprio, I feel like, all right with him. I just feel like, like, come on to him. I can see him just seeing this role as I don't typically play tough guys as yeah. evidence. Cause he's never, he shouldn't be cast as them. He's bald. He can play it. Yeah. You know, it's a, he's that performance type. He's not an accolade. I I don't get that vibe from him that yeah. he's out there trying to get the Oscar. Do you? I guess not. But I, I mean, mean, we're just looking at his filmography. Most of this shit, it, it, Kevin Smith's Tusk. <laughs> I don't know. Well, this was like, you know, a real deal mob character that he was kind of getting into like the whole uh, yeah, like outfit but, and look and trying to become that character. Like, I don't know if this, but was even mob thought, movies, when, when, unless it's Scorsese, mob Scorsese. movies don't fare well at like yeah. award shows or anything like that. That's what no. I'm saying. It's not like, dude, he was nominated for the first pirates, which he should have been. Uh, and that's about all. He's the kind of dude who, if this controversy stuff never happened, he would be getting a lifetime achievement award. He would like what they just did with Samuel L. Jackson and it's kind of Samuel L. Jackson sort of the same way in a way where it's like he's not chasing an Oscar. He's just doing what he loves and yeah. doing it brilliantly because he's a master of his craft. I'm not going to put Johnny Depp in a Samuel L. Jackson category, but I think the approach is similar. similar. I, I don't think their minds are set on the awards. Their gotcha. minds are set on the work, which is why I'm a fan of Depp. It looks like one of the last things I, that I can remember that he was in was this Fantastic Beasts movie, which was like the uh, J.K. Rowling yeah, sort of like Harry fired. Potter thing. Yeah, this is the <laughs> thing that he got fired from. Um, but yeah, this was one of the last things I remember him being in. And you have to admit, movies have changed. Nobody, <laughs> Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas would not get made today, no. would not get released in a movie theater. It probably wouldn't even get released on Netflix today. I mean, yeah what movies are you going to do? That's another thing. Like you got to look at the, what the industry is now you have, you either do these blockbuster films or as we made fun of Bruce Willis content. for and everybody you do content. Yeah. I you wonder do what's stuff gonna... to fill up streaming platforms, libraries. And I wonder what's going to happen with him. If he, if everything comes out that maybe he is vindicated a little bit and maybe he is, feels like he wants to go on and work more. Do you think he will continue to act? Do you think he'll just do his music stuff? I mean, I'd be kind of like fed up he with never, everything after yeah, being booted. Yeah, he never stopped the music stuff. I, I think, and this might be a blessing in disguise, if he keeps acting, maybe he'll go back to those kind of roles from the 90s because yeah. nobody's putting him in the Harry Potter universe anymore. Maybe it'll be a blessing in disguise. Yeah. And it shouldn't be too hard for him because we know that's where his heart is anyway. Yeah, more like indie movies, more niche, yeah. Yeah, niche yeah, 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 yeah. offerings. Get back with Burton. You guys are close. Burton will work with you. Definitely. Well, I mean, it'll probably be shit because Tim Burton hasn't done anything. Great maybe they in a both. Long maybe time. that's what they need to come back together. No, they don't. Because I attempted Alice in Wonderland. 
Oh my God. <laughs> oh, they do not so need each other. Dude, so bad. I turned it off in like 20 minutes. Oh. I could not eat. I couldn't even stand to sit through it like on a visual. And my girls, Anne Hathaway's in it too. And I still couldn't. Like they, yeah, that Tim bad. Burton loves I'm making just, Johnny Depp look bizarre. I'm just talking about if, if the the commercial. If you want to be successful again, like Burton will get it for you. Like you two can do it again. Yeah, I'm not saying artistically that's what I want. Well, I'm hoping for the best for Johnny. I am too. I hope it, let's I hope run through Amber Heard's filmography. Amber Heard, you heard. Let's see. What's Amber Heard got going on? Uh, let's see. I actually did see All the Boys Love Mandy Lane. Ew, I saw Alpha Dog, and I didn't know who she was at the time. That movie's terrible. Is that with Justin Yeah. Timberlake? Yeah. Um, yeah, I saw All the Boys Love Mandy Lane. and She's in Pineapple Express? I guess I just didn't know who she was back then. Yeah, I mean, I'm looking at... Zombieland? A, I've, I've seen that. I'm looking at a bunch of things that I really don't even know, other than n- now she's in, like, Justice League and I've, shit. Yeah, machete Aquaman. Kills, I've seen that. I only saw the first Machete. Can we cancel her based on her filmography alone? I know, geez. This is, her filmography is worse than what she did to Johnny Depp. Gosh, yeah, it's, it's Roasted. bad. Yeah, uh, Magic Mike, Double XL, The Danish Girl... And then, of course, like I said, Justice League. Yeah, so she's, you know, she's not really doing anything at all other than waiting to collect a paycheck, it seems. And I hope that Johnny Depp gets on the other side of this thing. Good luck, Johnny. Justice for Johnny. Justice for Johnny. So I guess, should we talk about some physical media news now? I don't know. Is this a physical media channel? That was our mission statement at one point. Is this a physical media channel? Maybe. (laughs) We're just a fucking gossip channel. I know. We love you, Johnny. (laughs) <laughs> we hate you, Amber. We're TMZ now. Um, well, one of the biggest... to the, to the commenter complaining about RoboCop. Don't worry, we're we're just going to do celebrity news from now don't on. Don't worry, Tim. Um, <laughs> one of the biggest one of the biggest news stories that, or some of the bigger news stories that came out this past week was uh, Criterion's next slate of 4K titles. Um, and they they put out a, a bunch of a bunch of titles that I've actually heard of this time around. Some of them, you know, they're just like they're releasing like ten things, and I've heard of like one. But at least this time, I've heard of most. I don't know that I'm picking any of these up, but I'm willing to be swayed on Raging Bull. Um, but that is one of the very first ones that they mentioned, uh, which is out July twelfth on four K and on Blu Ray from Criterion, and it's arriving with a four K restoration approved by Martin Scorsese himself. And it's getting an HDR color grade, if you can believe that. And it's all its black and white glory. Um, from what I can tell, all the features, they're, they're, it's, a good, it's, a good, uh, it's a good collection of features, but almost all of them have been available before, mm-hmm. except for one um, that I can tell, which is a new video essay from some film critics on Scorsese's Mastery of Formal Techniques. But other than that, it's just you know some audio commentaries, a making of documentary, which apparently is really good. That was on a previous Blu-ray release. Um, a few featurettes covering the collaborations of Martin Scorsese and uh, Bobby D. Some television interviews, an interview with Jake LaMotta from 1990, and then uh, a featurette with a bunch of like veteran boxers talking about Jake LaMotta. And then I think inside there's like a booklet with some essays and stuff like that. So it's a pretty modest release. It's nothing like too crazy. Um, but this is the first time Criterion has ever put this out. I wasn't sure if they had put it out before. No. And this was like a re-release or something. But this is their first time putting out Raging Bull. Mm-hmm. You a Raging Bull fan? Of course. I've never seen it. You'll like it. <laughs> okay. Um, I made the... Mis- I'll say this. My experience with Raging Bull... I made this. I made the mistake of being a teenager, who kind of saw good. Well, the first score I saw Taxi Driver first. Okay. Uh, that was my first Scorsese movie. But a couple years later, I saw Goodfellas, Casino, and I was like, "Oh, De Niro, Pesci, and Scorsese. Let me watch Raging Bull." And at how old I was, I can be honest, I wasn't ready. You weren't ready for it. I wasn't ready, and I was kind of like you know the that sort of like trust me, this movie is. It has that energy that those movies have in a different way, though. It, it's not as like like in a way. I I laugh at Goodfellas in parts, you yeah, know. Yeah. I laugh at Casino in parts, 
Um, this one is more serious. What I will say about it, and I think is interesting, you know, Paul Schrader wrote it, and Paul Schrader is known for, you know, Taxi Driver. Basically, Paul Schrader kind of makes the same movie over and over again about a, a man breaking down and doing something crazy at the end of the movie. That's pretty much his entire filmography. I wonder, is Paul Schrader okay? And no, he is not. <laughs> Great writer, great writer, Jake said. But uh, I think why Raging Bull is so special, and I, I was thinking about this when it got released, at least for American films, I, I don't, off the top of my head, correct me if I'm wrong, I can't think of another epic film told about a man, or a, a, anyone, told about a person who isn't really a good person mm -hmm. before 1980. Now, since then, I can eat like Wolf of Wall Street, uh, Boogie Nights. Mm -hmm. You know, there's movies like this since. Before this, I don't really, I mean, there were biopics before this, but usually it would be on a positive person, you know? Yeah. Uh, and Jake LaMotta is not that. There's a lot of crazy shit in this. Yeah. Um, yeah, well, just to, there's one thing that I read. I was reading a little bit of a history of this movie, and the one thing was, I guess, his his wife, Jake LaMotta's wife. Which one? What, Vicky LaMotta, or I believe. Well, I mean, like, I'm not well-versed yeah. on Jake LaMotta as I am with the movie, but he's married in the beginning, but he leaves her. Okay. And he ends up with Kathy Moriarty, who's okay. like 15 or something. So Vicky LaMotta, who I guess was is his real, like, his wife in real life, I guess, watched the movie and talked to Jake after it. And Jake said to her, like, wow, was I really that bad to you and, and you know and she was like you were worse uh then then what was portrayed in the movie now again i haven't seen the movie but like you said i, I guess this guy's like a real piece of work like i don't know his yeah, life what he does hey, what he doesn't do you're, you're gonna get some abuse yeah. you're gonna uh, that's get what some I spousal imagined. abuse that's in I, this movie that's what i imagined um, that they were referring to as this abuse yeah 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 uh yeah okay, <laughs> okay. so yeah, it's a, so he's a bad character but you're rooting for him, no? Not you're rooting for him to do better in life it, um, in this boxing it, match. It's weird, man. It's very artistic. It's hard to explain. It's a vibe. Like you're not it, it, kind of like a taxi driver or something. Only yeah. you're, like you're in his world. You're not judging. Him. You're just dropped into this world, yeah, person's world, and you're just living with them for a little while. And well, not even like, a little while. It's, it's I don't want to put it. Taxi Driver is a bad comparison. This is nothing like Taxi Driver. It spans time. His life and yes. career. Okay. I mean, obviously, you all know about the weight gain. You know, it shows him later in his life. It starts off, you'll see him there, and then that. Um, it's, yeah, man, yeah, it's it's a hard movie to describe, honestly, without giving away. Like, we could sit here and just go plot for it. It's okay. He lost this. Then he beat his wife in this part. And then, blah, yeah. blah, blah. then Joe Pesci shows up, and, you know, he's slamming a dude's head in a car door. I mean, you could say a bunch of stuff like that, but it really is like it's it's poetic, man. I, I don't know. It is. It's. A, it is. When people say it's a great movie, it's. It is. It's one of those. No, this is a great movie. Is it one of Martin's best? Movies? Yeah. Yeah. Is it considered widely as like this is in his top five? This is I'd his best. Oh, like, I'd imagine. Yeah. I'd imagine. Would you say people think this is? What well, has to best be because people were saying back then it was like the greatest movie of the 1980s, and it came out in 80. 80 on the dot yeah. yeah yeah the one crazy thing that i read about this again just looking at the history and i don't know too much about this movie in general or too much about his early filmography or what he was kind of going through but i guess he od'd and on uh, martin scorsese od'd on cocaine was ba basically getting ready to throw the towel in on his career um didn't think he was going to make any more movies i guess his movie prior uh just wasn't any good he was thinking like i'm gonna like go to europe and be an actor there or an actor a director there i didn't know you could od on cocaine i guess he did i guess he did um or he was in the <laughs> hospital he, he was in the hospital from it something uh, he was messed up in there and then robert de niro came to him while he was in the hospital or there around and said like look we have to make this movie mm -hmm. and he pestered him and he pestered him and he pestered him until finally he made the movie and because it became so great and and you know kind of helped Martin Scorsese continue to go on people credit as well as Martin Scorsese himself credit Robert De Niro for like basically saving his life and I, ma and making him uh, be able to go on and be the director wild. that he's I didn't know that but I didn't either I, I did know it was De Niro's baby I didn't know De Niro wanted to do it and Scorsese did not I yeah. didn't know that aspect yeah. uh, the one reason I always heard was that you know Rocky came out in 76 and Scorsese was like, I there's nothing to build on what they did on they those did, fight yeah. scenes and that. He's like, I have to find another angle or yeah. just, there's no, I don't, I'm not feeling this. That's actually why I heard they made it black and white. 
to differentiate it, it from Rocky. It works. And they do shoot things differently than Rocky. There are different shots. and stuff, But, you know, it, hmm. check it out, dude. I'm buying it. I was going to say blind buy. And it's going to look beautiful in 4K. I'm sure. I, I was considering a blind buy. Would I be going wrong with a blind buy here? No. And you like Martin Scorsese. Sure. So, no. It's cool that they picked this is accessible. up. And, yeah, De Niro, Pesci, all these people, you, you'll, you'll enjoy it. Yeah. Can I point out one thing that's really funny? Sure. I love on this new material that we, we have the screen in front of us. Mm-hmm. Uh, 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 scroll back up. You actually went down on it. Uh, the Raging Bull reflections on a classic featurette. Mm-hmm. I love how Richard Kelly is one of the filmmakers oh, there. Yeah, Richard Kelly. The great Richard the Kelly. The great Richard Kelly. Let's hear what he's got to say. Like all these other films, even Kimberly Pierce, like, yeah, she's had a few. Richard Kelly, you had one happy mistake. Why are you on here talking about Raging Bull? I don't know. Give me anyone else. Give me Paul Thomas Anderson, who was clearly influenced by this on Boogie Nights, as well as uh, um, Robert Altman. But What do you think about this art? I like it. I I've, I've I've kind of seen people say like that they hate it. What is this ugly? I art? hated the Blu-ray artwork. I've hated every DVD and Blu-ray yeah. artwork of this. It was that stupid slipcase. I never owned it. That's why I'm picking this up. Yeah. Where it's like him just with the boxing, like like it's the ring. It's black and white, but you barely see him. He always looks like Bruce Willis and Unbreakable on that yeah, damn yeah. cover. I like this way more. That's like the, the original. One sheet is, I mean, it's a variation on it, but that's the photo they use from what I recall. And honestly, I've, again, not having any opinion on this movie at all, because I don't know it. I think this looks cool. It looks badass. I think it looks great. Yeah, I've I've seen a lot of people say that they didn't like it. I think this looks great. I I like it too. I like how his hair is like glistening. It looks freaking 4K, the picture, (laughs) you know, (laughs) shit looks good. (laughs) Like, what's the big deal? Like, I think this looks great now. Yeah, so no, I'm definitely interested in getting this uh, as like a, probably like a blind buy. Right now, I think it's up there for like, 50 but if you you can already get it for like 36 on like diabolic dvd so it'll probably come down no matter where you get it hopefully there won't be any disc exchanges for it um but yeah no dude i'm excited to check this movie out yeah i'll be picking it up yeah the um and then there was two other two other movies that uh, criterion was putting out the same um around about the same time uh july 19th devil in a blue dress in 4k that i know you are a fan of yeah, I, that's I a don't. Good movie. I don't know what this movie is. Again, it's Denzel Washington, and this is the first time Criterion has put this out. Also, it was previously put out by uh, Indicator, and mm-hmm. then Twilight Time, that crazy ass label that just puts out like three hundred copies with no features, hey, but it's thirty bucks. We complain about other boutique labels saying limited, and then a couple weeks later, like, oh, yeah. we found some more in the yeah. back. Man, when Twilight Time is limited, yeah. they're not fucking around. They're not fucking around. It's gone. And they give you nothing. <laughs> they with erase it. the movie from existence <laughs> after releasing it. <laughs> that is it. Uh, but yeah, so what is what is Devil in the Blue Dress? What, why is Criterion putting this uh, landmark film out? Uh, I don't know. I never considered it landmark. Okay, personally. just liked it. No, no, it's a great, it's great. It's, it's criterion worthy. Is it for criterion sure, worthy? For sure. It's well, a Don very, Cheadle? very well made film. Don Cheadle steals the damn show. Does he? There, there's uh, a lot of John, Don Cheadle. Mouse, special Mousy, Mousy, Mouse, Mousy. He's Mouse. It's like his little brother. I could be fucking that up. It could be his friend. It's been a while since I've seen it, but he has the show of your role, uh, you, you know, supporting role. Yeah. But he's like the more, uh, like he'll kill somebody. He's more, you know, amped up a little bit. Gotcha. Um, dude, it's a film noir, like in the, traditional traditional sense and it's in what is it the 40s in la basically the setup is what is i think he loses his job in the beginning or something then uh he gets hired he basically gets hired to find uh uh jennifer beals okay and then just like every film noir it starts there and then it comes, oh, everything gets entangled and tangled right down to like corruption in the government mm-hmm. and a mayoral candidate who's doing some shady shit. Hmm. It's a traditional film noir. If you like that L.A. look, like the palm trees and shit like that, you got great. Denzel is always reliable. No, oh, yeah. Um, did he get any? Did he get any accolades no, for this? This, this movie, was like this under movie, the radar. Yeah, this movie wasn't on anyone's radar in '95. It, it was. It was slept on. I got you. Um. Yeah, I really like it. It's not a movie if you recommend to somebody like they're gonna watch it, it's gonna blow your socks off. But you're gonna watch it and be like, yeah, that was yeah. damn, well, that was well made. That was very well made. Well, it's getting new 4K restoration approved by the director Carl Franklin. 
Mm -hmm. and new Adobe Vision HDR presentation of the film this time around. New conversation with Franklin and Don Cheadle is coming back to, to talk about it. New conversation between the author of the book this is based on and the screenwriter of the film. And then some other conversations with the uh, director and then a screen test for Don Cheadle. Mm. So they're bringing a lot of Don Cheadle to you. Because uh, th I feel like this is the movie that broke him. This is a Don Cheadle movie. Um, has he been around for a while? Dude, he's in Colors. <laughs> that was 1988. Yeah, he has been around a while. Uh, he's a working I, actor. Yeah, yeah. And I feel like after Devil in a Blue Dress, which was what, 94, mm -hmm. 95? 95. Um, after that, then he got like out of sight. Uh, Boogie Nights. Hotel Rwanda. Bullworth. Well, Hotel Rwanda was a little bit later, but yeah, I feel like his star was on the rise and this was the performance that I think, especially even though it didn't set the world on fire commercially or with audiences, I think it was a role that maybe casting agents and people in the industry saw like, oh, that dude's good. We got to get him. That's yeah. cool. Yeah, I mean, and so that's that's another cool release from Criterion. Again, the first time they put it out, and then Virgin Suicides was the other one that I've at least heard of. I had not seen, and I know it's a Sofia Coppola movie. It, what did you think about that? Is that uh, something that you might pick up as well, or no? I Don't saw care it, for it again. I'm open to rewatching it. Okay. I saw it at 17. When did it When did it come out? Like 99, 98. Uh, I saw it when it came out. Okay. I, I was a teenager again. I didn't know what I was getting into, and I. I, I don't feel comfortable trashing it. Gotcha. I, I would need to reassess it. It's another modest release, too, just like Devil in the Blue Dress. It's just like a couple of things that are on there, but it is another 4K restoration from Sofia Coppola. She's supervised it just like Martin Scorsese did, just like Carl Franklin did. So they're getting all the directors to come out to give their stamp and their seal of approval on these movies. So I think that's pretty cool. Yeah. As far as like uh, supplemental features go, it doesn't seem like it's they're getting anything completely brand new, just some stuff that was maybe already there. But um, but in general, pretty good uh, week from Criterion. Was there any other ones that you saw that you were interested in? No, I mean those. Drive thought, my car, summertime. <laughs> I thought those. Virgin Suicides had already been announced. I thought Raging Bull and Devil in a Blue Dress that was like part of the new one. Virgin Suicides was part of that yeah, announcement. Was, yeah, and Okja. Uh -huh. Um, Okja. so yeah, Okja. Um, moving on from Criterion, Kino Lorber putting out Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind in, or in January, in July, July 26 on 4K Ultra HD, which, again, is another fire release from them. And we kind of briefly mentioned this a few months back that they were, they had like just said, hey, we are probably going to be putting this out. Well, it's confirmed they're putting it out and they put out what the special features are going to be. Um, and, you know, usually they just bring old features to the table, whatever they were able to get from previous releases from whatever before but they did actually spring for something new this time around i'm surprised me too because kino doesn't they... usually do that i'm just surprised who involved came back a cinematographer a new interview with the cinematographer okay that's it that's the only new thing um so you don't see gondry really doing much as far as revisiting things i don't feel like no. jim carrey <laughs> no, nothing new. Jim Carrey's just sitting out here. I'm retiring. You yeah, know, I don't think he's. No, yeah. And Winslet's still moved it, on and done a bunch of major, uh, great work. Yeah, I mean it's um it's it's a pretty pretty cool uh, release no matter what. I mean there is a lot of good features on here from a previous release that had come out, and mm -hmm. it's cool that this is in 4K. I'm sure it's going to look beautiful in 4K. Most of the yeah. Kino stuff we've seen have, has looked pretty good. Um, it is a two disc. Uh, edition. It's got the new Dolby Vision HDR master color graded by the cinemat cinematographer who is the one that's coming back to do an interview. Um, was it Jan de Bont? Not Jan de Bont. This is Ellen Curis. Uh. Not Jan de Bont, but I would love to hear from Jan. I um, was close. Audio commentary from Michelle Gondry and Charlie Kaufman. Then you're going to get a, 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 um, a, a, like a, not a doc. I don't think it's a documentary, but it's a pretty sizable uh, featurette on a look inside the creation of the film. There's a conversation with Jim Carrey and the director. There's a conversation with Kim, uh, Kate Winslet and the director inside the mind of director Michelle Gondry. Anatomy of a scene deleted in extra scenes. The polyphonic spree light and day music video is being included here. And then a lacuna infomercial <laughs> for uh, anyone that wants to have their memory erased. Um, what are your thoughts on this movie? It's a masterpiece. <laughs> you do say that with a shrug. I say it with a shrug because I, again, I'm tired I, of talking about that. No, it's not tired. It's just, I, 
you know, sometimes I wish I had a hot take. Yeah, there's sometimes no it's one of those, I want to come in here. You know, what? fuck that movie. I, you know, you just yeah. want to have a nah, dude. It, it's a masterpiece from the beginning to the end. It's a masterpiece. It's mm -hmm. the only thing I think I can complain about is I'm not a big Elijah Wood fan, but he's playing a dick in it. Yeah. So, hey, masterpiece. It is <laughs> as chaotic visually as sometimes this movie gets and kind of like just bizarre in general with the how the movie is put together it's crazy to me that like it does work so well and that it is a masterpiece because you don't see movies that are this like fragmented even with the subject matter the way they chose to portray the subject matter and how they chose it to look fragmented and feel fragmented it's like it almost this should have just it seems like on its face that this is just going to live over here in a corner and that be it but man was that movie so awesome like you said it is it's a masterpiece and it had a point and the a thing i love and i yeah and the thing i loved about it was most of these and let's face it it, it it's basically a sci-fi movie yeah it's in, artsy sci-fi yeah but the what it says about love in general I think is beautiful. And mm -hmm. I think not many movies, a lot if, to me, like any hall kind of had the same message or a lot of movies from the seventies would have messages about the, even the way Tootsie and uh, yeah. we're laughing because we were some Tootsie jokes Tootsie. outside of uh, this podcast, but no, the whole fact of, or the, the whole point it's making that dude, love sucks. You're going to get hurt, but the journey is worth it. And the fact that they have resigned their lives to keep reliving the misery mm -hmm. because the love is worth it. And that's true. Everyone, there's no relationship that's perfect. But at the end of the day, once you start to take away the good things, you realize, nah, it's worth the pain. Yeah. And I think this movie visually shows it. Yeah. Uh, the dialogue. Show, I mean, it's just it, 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 it hits on all cylinders. It's a masterpiece. Jim Carrey's brilliant. And Kate Winslet, she's great as always. I have nothing bad to say about the movie, no. honestly. There's, hit, there's not one thing I could say bad about it. You're right. And it hits emotionally. Like, it hits mm -hmm. so good. And because, it, like you said, it is like a sci-fi sort of movie. And I think it is. I think the theme is so powerful that it sort of rises above, like, this just being like a, a sci-fi movie. And they might even downplay some of the sci-fi elements a little bit and focus more on the love aspect. But no, I, don't I don't think know. so at all. I think they balance it perfectly. Yeah, it is. It is. It's a perfect it's the balance. story. And yeah. it's and exactly. It is a great story. When you think and I was thinking about Jim Carrey in this movie and I was like, oh, wow. Like just when I was thinking about his filmography, I kind of forgot for a second that this movie landed much further out in his film output where he had already been doing relatively some serious stuff not like man much. on the moon and you know uh, like yeah, so, some like not to the point where it's just like like he kind of started off as like obviously very goofy humor then it went into more that was just straight comedy then it was kind of okay let's try to do some dabble in some like drama or whatever but this definitely is a gem within his serious film it's his best out, serious output. film yeah and well that's what i was going to ask you because i've never seen man in the moon and i know a oh, lot man, of people way better than man i know a lot of people love him and his performance as andy kaufman in that movie i i've never seen it so i can't like you know speak on it but this movie man I'm on the like, moon well, is not a great movie it's you know? a good movie but it's as good his movie. performance is, is more notable than the movie itself. <sighs> see, that was one of those situations for me where it's really hard for me to not see Jim Carrey. Yeah. Uh, and to me, he didn't look like Andy Kaufman. Um, he does. He does. He's great. Yeah. Especially as Tony Clifton that I bought 110% because yeah. that's makeup anyway. But I mean, he doesn't ruin it. Like he, he's great. He did what he could do. Yeah. It's just his face. Yeah. Is so ingrained in me as Ace Ventura. <laughs> yeah. as. Loy, uh, you know, yeah, as, as dumb and dumber as all this stuff that like I see Jim Carrey first, not Andy Kaufman. Right. And the movie itself is a little too long and a little, they didn't know. Eternal Sunshine is perfect. Eternal Sunshine is better than Truman Show. I'll say that too. Yeah. Yeah. I Honestly, I think Truman Show is a little overrated. I, I mean, this movie just has a, a heart that these other movies just do not have. Like you right. said, it's like when you're talking about love and loss and pain, and, and it's not just it's not just them. It's like the whole cast. Everyone's going through it. Kirsten Dunst and Mark Ruffalo, like they're having some issues and drama trying to erase their own memories and all kinds of stuff. Like everybody's dealing with like these sort of issues. I think it's just, it's universal. Whereas maybe Truman Show isn't. I don't know. I think this... and Well, Truman Show doesn't even make sense today because everybody wants to be on camera. <laughs> it's true. 
Truman <laughs> Show's yeah. point is moot. It, yeah. it, that movie doesn't even fucking compute to no. today's audiences. No, it's true. But uh, yeah, yeah. No, and Jim Carrey knocked this out the park. No, for sure. For he, sure. And I love Kate Winslet. Kate Winslet is one of the best actresses of this generation. And I think he was better than her. And he didn't even get nominated. She did. I I did not know her well enough in this movie, but now that going back and looking at her as an actress and looking at her in this film and other things I've seen her in, I agree with you. I think she's outstanding. Outstanding. And and, sh- and he it's it's so crazy that he can even he was even able to be in this movie and be the person they needed him to be. And the fact that he could be, it was just so jaw dropping for me to watch and be like, wow, this guy can literally do. Pretty much anything. Like he can be this actor, he can be Ace Ventura. He can do either one. And I think that's really fascinating. Yeah. I don't know. And and the sort of what kind of gels it all together, not just them. And you have the visual style. Are you gonna say John Bryan? I'm gonna say friggin' John Bryan, bro. I mean, give me a break. Like and honestly, it's probably his best score. I I think it's my favorite score of So good. So freaking good. This is also my wife's favorite movie. Is it? (laughs) Yeah, it's her favorite movie of all time. So no, nah, it's great. Yeah, it's just working on all cylinders. Like you said, it's like the acting is great. The whole cast, the visual stuff that's going on, the soundtrack, it's just like a perfect movie. Mm-hmm. Will you be picking this up in 4K? I will. And you know what's funny? Um, actually, I probably would have regardless. The DVD, I, I own that DVD special edition that was like the two, you know, two disc came with a slipcase yeah, and all yeah, that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, don't ask me how, because I am very anal about my collection. That one of those discs got scratched. Oh my! And I remember I was so angry about it, and I never replaced it. So I'm prime. I'm ready. I I gotta get this. You're ready. And for you're us. right. This is a visual movie. Yeah. I want to see this in 4K. If Kino does anything remotely close to what they did with Misery, yes, yes, I would love <laughs> yes. to see what this looks like in 4K. I can't wait to see some of the early you know screenshots and reviews on this. Yeah. I mean, I'm gonna get it no matter what because I only ever had it on DVD. Insane. So I'm excited to get this in 4K. But I'm I'm really excited to see what it looks like. Kino keeping it classy. They're just doing their usual r- original box art with their slip cover on it. I like that. And features really aren't that new, but they're still nice nonetheless. So at least we're not losing them. No, you're not losing them. You're getting everything you want. Plus a probably a fantastic picture upgrade. So that's coming out again, July 26th from Kino. I have to go build a bird box. <laughs> what does he say? Bird box. Oh, a bird box. What is that? A birdhouse. A bird. Building a birdhouse. A bird, building a birdhouse. Yeah. Oh, David like, Cross in the back. Yeah, yeah. He's like just trying to get this done. <laughs> I'm trying to build a birdhouse. That was great. Yeah, I forgot about him too. Like he's in it randomly. He's perfect in it. No, he's perfect in it too. Um. Yeah. So, some other announcements. From our good friends at Paramount, they're putting a bunch of Eddie Murphy stuff back out, which we've talked about Eddie Murphy here time and time again. And, you know, we talked about Coming to America that had gotten released a little while ago um, in 4K and some other um, just general Eddie Murphy thoughts. I think like Beverly Hills Cop, we talked about uh, 48 Hours, another 48 Hours. But now Paramount's kind of going to fire out a few more of his titles, which all seem to be coming in some like bare bones edition. So I'm not sure it's anything to be too excited about, but they are putting out Raw. They're putting out Boomerang, and they're putting out Harlem Nights. I can speak on why two of those aren't going to receive any big, lavish releases. Okay. Let's start with Raw, because Raw doesn't have... <laughs> that's one that's not going to get It doesn't have a release, release date yet. It was just announced, <laughs> yeah. and I don't, I've don't. i never seen Raw, and I've never seen Delirious either, so I don't know which one's funnier. Um Wait, is it Raw or Delirious? Actually, I'm, I'm, Raw's coming oh, out. Oh, it's Raw. Okay. Raw I'm thinking, I was thinking out. Delirious. So yeah, no, Raw. Raw's coming out, mm. and I've never seen this or Delirious. Um, but So what's your take on, on this stand-up finally hitting home media? I mean, both of them are classic stand-ups. I watched them on VHS years ago growing up. Uh, Worth a blue pickup? Not really. Delirious is funnier. So I would pick up Delirious. I own Delirious on DVD. I've never picked up Raw. Uh, Raw is directed by Keenan Ivory Wayans, man. Is it really? Yeah, yeah, no yeah. Kidding. He showed up and shot it for him. Uh, well, the reason why I say this will not get a lavish release or much attention is a lot of homophobic jokes. Uh... <laughs> Honestly, more in Delirious, but... Man, today's cold. I don't think Eddie Murphy or anyone really wants to like bring that back up. They want to put it out, but it's in this weird place where it's like if you're in the stand up comedy, 
th- these were like, this, yeah. this was the standard of the 80s. Yeah. But today, it don't look too good. Yeah. But it is that's, funny. That's, that's tough. But it is, you know, I, so I get why it's sort of a, we're throwing it out there, but we're not going to make some big deal about no, it. No, because nobody that's younger is probably going to buy this and no, be happy with it. No, this is going to be all, they're going to be like, why is Donkey talking about yeah. the LGBTQ community like this? Right. No. It, uh, <laughs> yeah, this is for people our age and older, to say the least. Boomerang, same thing. Mm. Uh, nobody was happy making that. Um, who, and who put Boomerang together? Who directed it? Yeah, who directed that? It was Reginald Hudlin. Okay. Uh, Reginald Hudlin directed House Party. Oh, one of my, boy. One of my favorite movies of all time. And I saw Boomerang when it came out in 92. If you're unfamiliar with the plot, even the tagline, a player who's getting played. And the whole setup is he's this marketing executive, Eddie Murphy. He's successful. He gets any woman he wants. You know what I mean? He's yeah. living the dream. And then he falls for Robin Givens, who throws him for a loop. But then he also knows Halle Berry, who is like the nice girl who runs, you know, uh, she works with kids. She yeah. like does art with kids. It's clear, like, dude, she's the, the good girl. And Robin right. Givens is not the, so good. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. So... In the original script of this movie, spoiler, all right, spoiler alert. Spoiler How do you alert. think this movie ends? Who do you think he gets with? Hopefully the good girl. Wins. Yes, he does. He does. Now, remind me what the motto, what the tagline for the film was. The player's getting played. How the fuck is he getting played when he ends up on top at the end of this movie he with shouldn't. a girl who he shouldn't end up with because he treated her like shit? He should get what played happened by was, both of them. They should be like out to get him. And that was the original ending of the movie. Was it? It, and it's actually really cool if you know the movie, which I do very well. I used to watch it all the time. They tested it. It was Eddie Murphy in 1992. Nobody wanted to see a down ending, basically. Yeah. And for all we know, Eddie Murphy may have had a hand in how that yeah. turned out as well. I don't know that. But I do know it tested poorly. Ugh. So there's the scene at the end of the movie. And there's great comedy bits in this. You get great comedy scenes with John Witherspoon. You got Martin Lawrence. You've got David Allen Greer. You've got Chris Rock. I mean, they're, they're all in there, dude. And they all wow. have funny little bits and lines, yeah. lines that you have heard quoted over the years that you don't even realize are coming from Boomerang, probably. Wow. But anyway, at the end, when he's down and out, basically realizes, you know, I'm not getting either one of these girls. It's him and his two best friends, uh, David Allen Greer and Martin Lawrence. They're on a rooftop. And it's a beautiful moment as friends. Mm-hmm. They're just like, dude, you know, we'll get through it. We're boys, yeah. you know, and sometimes shit doesn't work out. And that was how it was supposed to end. Mm. Kind of like on this poignant tip. Yeah. And the whole movie leading up to it, if they would have ended it like that, I was like, this movie would be, and maybe not when it came out, but like it, over time, I think people, would, it would have been a classic in my opinion. I kind of hate how it got shafted, but because of all that fuckery, Similar to what you said about uh, like Juice when they brought yeah. Tupac yeah. back in, yeah. <laughs> so, like just treat us something dumb. I feel like there's bad blood behind this one. Uh, not bad blood, but not a lot of like, hey, that wasn't ultimately my film. It got tinkered with. Yeah. Nobody, I think, has any real positive stories to say. Correct me if I'm wrong, but from what I always gathered, that. So what we have at the end of the day is a sort of mishmashed film yeah. tonally. It works as comedy. It works as romance. It works as drama. But it's doing all of it too much to where it doesn't gel. Yeah, and just didn't work in the yeah. end. That's a shame. It is. It and is. you think you think Eddie Murphy had something to do with maybe? I do, and I don't know. I'm just saying Eddie Murphy definitely had the star power at that time to be like, hey, if I don't like this ending, I'm switching it. Yeah. But he also took it on to show a different side okay. of him. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it might not have been just. A, I, I don't want to blame him. Okay. Uh, no blame. No blame on. But Eddie. whatever happened. Yeah, that. When you're in another funny story about Reginald Hudlin, I don't yeah. know if anybody out there will care. When Tarantino uh, finalized the script for Django Unchained, he was hesitant. Really? He was like, I'm a white guy writing this. Yeah. And he's friends with Reginald Hudlin. Hmm. And so he took him out. Like, they went out to dinner and he kind of discussed it with Reginald Hudlin. He's like, man, should I do this? Should yeah. I and Reginald Hudlin was like, yeah, you should. Did they have a past? What was their past? Why did he feel I don't connected know. I mean, they're him? just filmmakers. Just filmmakers. Just like, oh, well, Reginald he, Hudlin was like the head sure. of BET at one point in the 90s. I, I don't know. I guess they're just friends. Just knew something, you know, yeah. That's pretty cool. But yeah, but Reginald Hudlin kind of told him like, nah, you believe it. You do, do it. it. You yeah. do it. Don't shy away from it. And I thought that was cool. 
Hmm. But have you ever owned Boomerang? I own it on DVD. Did I've you? I've watched the commentary with Reginald Hudlin. That's why I know, you know this this, ended, <laughs> this ending issue. Uh, and that was the only feature on it, which is interesting too because this soundtrack was huge. Dude, End of the Road by Boys to Men. Is that not where it on, came from? Yes, it's not on any Boys to Men album. It was only on the Boomerang soundtrack. Oh, why, so why don't they throw that video on there? Yeah. PM could. Dawn's I Die Without You. Oh, I love I Die Without Boomerang You. Boomerang soundtrack. It yeah. was the song is about the movie. Die without you. Listen to the lyrics of I Die Without You. Without it's the story you. of the movie. Baby. Is it my turn to wish you were lying here? I got fucked over. And you just sing that. I need you to sing it. Tony Braxton, Is love it should. Turn? Tony Braxton, love should have brought you home. Another classic off that. There you go by Johnny. Dude, the soundtrack is fire. Fuck, is I, this I, Power Mountain release coming I'm a, with the soundtrack? I'm a big fan of this. Or movie. not? I'm a huge fan. Come of Come on, Paramount. Huge fan of Boomerang. Apparently. So, are you going to be buying this I bare am. bones ass? Boomerang? I am. I'm a, dude, I I have a history with this movie. I, right. I adore it. And dude, the parts that are funny are really fun. John Witherspoon scene alone is worth watching the entire movie for, because you got to coordinate. <laughs> I've never seen it, but I like hearing you say that, Russ. You got, I like to, you you got to coordinate. Well, the other one, <laughs> the other movie that they're putting out of his, which I am very familiar with and I do also really like, but I don't know if I, I don't know. It's just, it's such a bare bones looking thing. Maybe I'll get it. Maybe I won't. I don't know. It's Harlem Nights. Let's see. I've never seen Harlem Nights. So see, are we just, we just play right off each other. I mean, first of all, look at this horrendous. What is it? What is Eddie, Mur- what's Eddie Murphy's Where's Red face Fox? doing? Why does Eddie Murphy look so stupid? Richard Pryor looks like he just like farted. Eddie, <laughs> Eddie Murphy's like, yo, I just smelled your fart. Like, why do they look this way? There's a beautiful, um, like, pan painted or drawn poster, original poster for this movie, which looks great. Isn't that what the one with Red this? Fox on it? I, I don't know if he's on it or not. Hold on. Um, Harlem Nights. Let's see. Let me see if they just have it on here. There it is right there. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I that's mean, awesome. I mean, look at this poster. Dude, that's a badass poster. It's I would hang, if I was like a big fan of this movie, like I said, I've never seen it, I would hang up that poster. Dude, that's, that's a awesome. Great, I know, it's a cool ass poster. Now look at this. Like, what is that? It's that's like so, trash. it's so stupid. So, anyway, I love this movie, but this art is ass. Um, so, this movie I saw as like a one two punch right after. Uh, coming to America. I think I saw coming to Amer- to America for the first time on VHS probably. And I think at the same time, it was probably some time it passed wherever I'd seen it. This VHS was also there. It mm-hmm. might've been at a friend's house, a cousin's house. Hell, it might've even been mine. I don't even know, but both of these VHSs were together. So I kind of watched them back to back, so to speak. Um, this movie, however, is written by sole writing credit, directed, produced and starring Eddie Murphy. Eddie Murphy. And in hindsight, you can really tell that. Like, I didn't notice that at first, but you can really tell, like, this is his movie, his, like, he wants to put his stamp on something, or he wants to kind of own the whole thing and work with his hero, his idol, Richard Pryor. Um, and Red Fox. Chance to prove himself. Yeah, like, It's all like him throwing stuff. all great black comedians in one movie. That's in what I always got the impression of yeah. from this. Yeah, and, and I mean, honestly... Past and present. Yeah, the, and the movie got bad reviews. I mean, it didn't really ho- it didn't really do very well as far as that's concerned. I don't think that was something I ever cared about. And I really just enjoyed the comedy of it. Like, I think the jokes are great. They all are very funny. The dialogue is funny. You know, it's, it's trying to put a little caper together. It's trying to be Mm -hmm. clever and slick and all that kind of stuff. And I honestly, I feel like it works. I do. I think, I think it works um, as far as that's concerned, but you can see where maybe why it didn't get elevated to the heights of, again, going back to like a coming to America or something where I don't know that he was trying to do that all over again, but he's trying to put another, you know, comedic gem out there, which just didn't land for a lot of people. Um, I don't know if the chemistry honestly worked with a lot of the actors. Probably a lot of ego. Yeah. And that's probably, that's comedians. They're probably all trying to one up each other. I'd imagine. Yeah. It it seemed like there was, there was a lot of, um, uh, some ad libbing that was going on for the most part, but you'd want that though, yeah. wouldn't you? With the when you I got, would, I would you told me, so. isn't Robin Harris in it as well? Or, he is briefly Della Reese, Red Fox, Danny Aiello, Arsenio's even got a little cameo. His cameo is funny as hell, dude. Arsenio Hall's cameo in this movie is so funny. Like that's the thing; it's a funny movie. There's got some really great uh, moments. He in had it. a great physical year that year. He did have a good physical year. Physical, 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 um, fiscal, physical. Um, but the, the thing that I did remember reading after the fact, which maybe goes towards the whole chemistry piece is I guess Richard Pryor in his, uh, memoirs or his autobiography or something. Um, I guess 
felt he didn't really gel with Eddie when they met. And I guess felt like as a comedian, he would always kind of tell Eddie to kind of like not be so mean with his comedy, which I guess Eddie did not really agree with a whole lot. And I guess at some point, maybe they did bump heads a little bit on this production. Their styles were very different. Very different. And, you know, like I said, this was an opportunity for him to, you know, bring his idol in and work with all these people. But I think he even commented saying like, I could have done better. Like I, I could have focused more. I was more concerned with where the next party was going to be and not whether my movie was turning out well or not. And when you say my movie, if you're writing, directing, acting, producing, like, yeah, it's, I, you have nobody but to blame but yourself. As someone who has never seen it, I've always gotten the impression, basically what you just said. I kind of feel like it's a cult movie. I and, feel like people who love this, love it. They quote it. Do you remember that past the Cavarcier video? Yeah. That was a reference to this. Like it has its place yeah. in, in cult. Uh, culture you know pop culture history i think it's cool and i mean i wish the release even if the art was the original art i would feel a lot better about just blind buying this even if it had nothing on it i'm not in it to like see all the behind the scenes i don't care i just really like this movie and i would yeah. i would re i've rewatched this movie several times well you always ask me this would i like it i think you would yeah. i think you would honestly i mean i don't i don't think there's anything about it that is any different than most of his comedic output around this time i just think you know it just it, it was trying to be a little bit something different that maybe just didn't work out all the way. Maybe if I go back now with a fresh pair of eyes and look at it, I can see exactly what failed and what worked and what didn't. But my memory of this movie is I just really enjoy it. I find it to be entertaining. Mm. It's just solid. So I will be picking this up. Probably it doesn't have a, this is another one that doesn't have a date just yet. Only boomerang has a date so far and that's June 28th. So keep your eyes peeled for these Eddie Murphy releases Hopefully this art gets updated for Harlem Nights because this looks like crap. Um, but yeah, Raw, Boomerang, the rest of it, it's coming. It's coming soon. It's a new sheriff in town. New sheriff in town. Um, and then just to round out today, a couple of other, you know, maybe some notable releases. Maybe not. I don't know. Russ, you tell me what you think. Good Burger. Notable. 25th anniversary release. Now, I'll oh tell you this, God. I am getting, 25th. yeah, not only do I feel old after saying that, but I'm getting serious like Wayne's World vibes here where this is just a reason to put a steelbook out. This is nothing, when they say, oh, look at the 25th anniversary, everyone came back. And I was like, no one came back. Like, this is just them putting this back out again um, for its 25th anniversary on July 19th. Well, wasn't it in the steelbook case with Wayne's World, you had to buy one and two together? Or were they separate? Who cares? Uh, for some reason, this does. <laughs> for some reason, this one isn't as egregious to me. And you know what's hilarious about this release? What it debuted on Blu-ray like last year. I was gonna say the same thing. No, no, because it just it, came out on Blu-ray did. last year. No, no, year. because listen, it's been sitting in my Amazon cart since it came out, and I'm always getting the notifications. Good Burger has dropped from nine ninety four yeah. to seven thirteen. Yeah, and I still never pull the trigger. It's like I'm waiting for How it to go. It go. I know I'm waiting for it to go to 99 cents. I'm waiting or for it to be free. <laughs> what are they just going to give this with a purchase? I know, just make it a prime benefit. Send everyone a copy of Good Burger on Blu-ray. <laughs> Does answer the call? Come inside. But now I'm happy I never bit the bullet because yeah. I'll probably pick this up. I'm a fan of this movie. Okay, I and, I, and it makes no sense that I am. It mean I don't it get it at all. No, I can't wait. For I you was to tell too me why. old. I was by the time I saw it, I was 16. I did not grow up on Nickelodeon. I never saw the show. Nothing. I was flipping through channels one day and HBO. This was back in those days when you had to flip through channels. I literally stopped on the part where Carmen Electra is walking into where they work. And, and it's like, like yep, this, this it's, and me. it's like this slow-mo thing. It's like, wow, the beautiful girl. And I'm like 15, 16. Uh, yeah, I left it on. Out. Yeah. And you know, back in those days, you kind of just did leave Singled anything out. on. You did. Yeah. And, and I ended up laughing at the park because they t like they take her out on a date and the whole time she's getting like the shit kicked out of her getting hit with like the mini golf club and all that. Yeah. It's silly, but like innocent. And then, dude, George Clinton shows up, and I'm. I, it's a fun movie. It works. It's fucking Sinbad is awesome in this movie. He makes me laugh in this movie. All right, Sinbad. Well, I think this steelbook looks pretty good. I mean, honestly, I'm I think gonna it works. buy it. I'm gonna buy it. I think this. it works for it what does. the hell. I think it looks awesome. Um, I've never seen this movie. It's fun, man. I liked all that, which is what this spawned from as a Nickelodeon yeah. sketch comedy. I'm a fan of sketch comedy. Two of my favorite shows of all time are sketch comedies. This was a 
sketch comedy for kids that kind of worked, you know, enough. Mm-hmm. Like it worked okay. Like I yeah, laughed yeah. at it. It was good. And like I said, well, take it. Listen to me. Never saw that show. Had yeah. I, literally at that time, I didn't even know it existed. And I watched this movie, and I yeah. really enjoyed it. So, and, and even even maybe you should blind buy this one. As a look who's talking man, I'm gonna go out <laughs> on a limb and say you're gonna enjoy Good Burger. I will say that. When kid, I believe it even has Abe Vigoda in it. Does it really? It has Abe Vigoda in it. <laughs> Abe there Vigoda you factor. go. He does. Abe Vigoda works at the. Uh, it's like a flow chart. Spot. If Abe Vigoda, yes, then must buy. I don't recall if there's any babies, but Abe Vigoda is in this film. Well, day one purchase. Day one purchase, <laughs> I guess. My, uh, I remember thinking when Keenan joined SNL. I was like, that's so dumb. I can't put this guy from Good Burgers joining SNL. And I mean, not that I'm a huge SNL fan to this day, like I was back way back when, but honestly, for what I do see, he's still the most solid, reliable part of that entire show. So I got to give the guy props. I mean, he's been around a long time. Looking at this 25 years ago, and he damn near looks the same. I'm a Kel guy. Are you a Kel guy? Kel is what makes it funny. Kel is the heart, at least in this movie. I don't know about the show. Kel is the heart. Kel is the heart. Keenan just plays And what happened straight. between them two? There wasn't there bad blood between them? And then they kind of got back together again to like bring... No, you don't know? I think there was bad blood. Well, Keenan performed sexual favors on Lorne Michaels. Possibly that's where the bad blood came from. Edit that out. That was a bad joke. Yeah, good one, Russ. We're live. Um, (laughs) So moving right along, now that you know that you're going to blind buy a good burger. Definitely. (laughs) And I like Keenan. I I was... I do. I like Keenan Thompson. Well, I actually know someone who worked with him. Really? Well, I know someone whose daughter was a writing partner with him for a time. And according to her, the daughter's mother is like an older woman. I yeah. know. He's apparently a really cool, nice, laid back, down to earth dude. I imagine that he is. He seems very nice. Jonah Hill, on the other hand? No. Not not nice. Not nice. But she's worked with him too. No. But she did tell me Keenan... It's like, it's cool. It's like this woman I work with. She's older. She just moved here. She lived in Hollywood, literally California her entire life. She's like retired and she has all these stories she tells me and like, yeah, her daughter with Keenan. I don't know. It's pretty cool. It was nice to hear that he's cool. Normal. Decent. Yeah. Pretty cool. Well, this coming out for its 25th anniversary, July 19th, some uh, movie news abroad. Uh, first Germany. So Studio Canal, who we're big fans of, I just randomly stumbled upon this. These are coming out like two days from now. They're putting out two digi books, one for Irreversible on blue, and then one for Link, Russ. Your favorite movie just keeps showing up all the damn time. I don't know why, but it's How like many? we're we are linked to Link. I don't How know many what it releases is. Releases of Link are there now? <laughs> there are so many. There are so many. So and I own them all. So these are both these are both Blu-ray releases, um, but they're in these digi books, which are kind of cool. And I can't see you know this the irreversible one has one movie with two cuts, which seems to be the same uh, situation that the um, indicator release that got put out. Uh, was done and then with link here you've only got one cut but you're getting a blu-ray and a dvd and it's pretty solid looking digi book i think this art looks pretty cool i don't know mm. you, what do you you tell me all the shoe fans out there all the terrence stamp heads out there I links mean, back uh, magnificent i'm trying to think of another word 4k so. digital restoration you see that down there at the bottom so uh, you know you've been hanging on to your kino lorber one russ maybe this is the one to pick up it Ger- is germany release only but this is a blu-ray um, and then they are also again Studio Canal, but this one is in France. And I think we briefly mentioned this not that long ago. But uh, Cat's Eye, so Cat's Eye they had announced, but now they've got um, official art out there, and they have only shown that it's going to be in France for now. I might hang on a little bit longer to see if it shows up in the United States, but if not, I might end up just picking this up. This is honestly. I know, like I said, we talked about this briefly. It's a really cool 80s anthology little gem with mainly Stephen King, like all thread throughout it. But I don't know. It's a it's a really cool, interesting little movie. There's some really cool performances in it. If you're a James Wood fan, James Woods fan for sure. This is an easy pickup. One of the best performances of his career in this movie. <laughs> Drew Barrymore, I've never liked. This was like right off the hot off the heels of uh, Firestarter. Def- She's like the same age. I will defend Drew Barrymore any day over James Woods. Would you? Yes. Um, James Woods has like one great movie. Which one? 
video drone. Lester Diamond? The hell was that? I mean, in Casino. That's Casino is not his movie. Yeah, he's, but, he's okay, a, if you well, add up, Casino is actor. Casino is a three and a half hour movie. He's in it for five minutes. I'm not counting that. He's if he's a star, it. James Woods. He's not the star of Cat's Eye either. He's got a portion, well, yeah, but he's, his portion's this, good. This is an anthology, isn't it? It is. His portion's good. His cor- his portion is good. So I, I can tell Russ, you're not interested by the Studio Canal 4K release. I don't know if there's any <laughs> Cat's Eye fans. Out there. Give me a shout down below if you are a Cat's Eye fan. I like Drew Barrymore, maybe. Her segment is kind of like my least favorite. And I think it would be your least favorite too, to be honest, because it's the only one that's more steeped in supernatural, whereas the other ones are more like thriller types. So I kind of like that. Um, Have you ever heard of a movie called Dog Soldiers? I have. Do you own Dog Soldiers? No, but I know it was a Scream Factory special edition. It was, and I actually, I saw that Scream Factory was putting out Dog Soldiers... <clears throat> in their uh, collector's edition, you know, 4, 4K collector's edition that they normally do. Mm-hmm. And I would have even batted an eye at it only because I've never really heard of this movie. i never seen it. it. just was like, oh, this is another Screen Factory release that, you know, will just come and go as people far as like I'm it. concerned. Do people love it? I don't know. Mm-hmm. Um, but the reason why I stopped on it even just for a little bit longer is because I also noticed that Second Sight is putting this same release out. And they are doing um, like what appears to be their usual awesome packaging, awesome, you know, posters and all the stuff that goes inside of it. So um, let me see if I can just find theirs really quick. Here it is. Yeah. So here's their version. Um, Again, it's kind of like up to you which what style you like. This one's obviously coming from the UK from Second Sight, whereas Scream Factory is the US. I don't know too much about the features that are on here, but as far as Second Sight being an excellent company to buy from and to the materials mm-hmm. that usually come with their releases, this would definitely be something to maybe stop and look at if you cared to do so. Yeah, I mean, the only thoughts I have about Dog Soldiers is when I in a world where Wolf Cop and another Wolf Cop exists, yeah, there's nowhere else to go. There's nowhere else to go diminishing returns after that the only place left to go is our last title for the day and that is under the sea that's the only place left to go with oh is that kevin spacey uh uh, (laughs) beyond sequest dsv and Hmm. what a awful i can't even believe this show is coming out but the fact that mill creek entertainment are the ones putting it out just made me laugh i'm sorry i had to bring that up you sequest fan russ no but i'm Neither a Mill Creek. Why is this weird for Mill Creek? I, I, it's what not, standards did they drop the ball on well, that you that, have? For them? That's what I mean. It's like it's funny that. This, so when I saw that this was being announced, I was like, "Wow, who's putting this out?" And then I was like, "Wow, it's Mill Creek of all people to put this out." I guess that makes sense. I see a lot of people trashing Mill Creek, especially when it comes. Yeah, to Yeah, because they put out Sequest. Well. <laughs> Especially when it comes to how they put <laughs> things out, the quality of things they put out. Can hey. See? Oh, Russ, shit. Now I understand. Listen, I we, take it all back. Can we get back to why? I didn't know Michael Ironside was in this. I had, right. to, I had to bring it back, Russ. I had to bring it back. Michael Ironside. Woo. Okay, now I understand. This should be a Criterion release. Yes, dude. He's here. He's here. This is it. He, sh- he should be. This should be a Criterion release with, with, with Michael Ironside. And, of course, you know, rest in peace here. Rest John, in peace, of yeah. course, dude. If John you had Brandis, to work, if you had to work alongside Michael Ironside, and don't oh. forget Roy Sh- Schneider, or is it Schreider, Schreiber, Schreiber? Le- dude, he's Roy like the Schreiber. third coolest guy in Jaws. <laughs> no, we're looking at Michael Ironside. <laughs> he's the third coolest underneath of Jaws himself. <laughs> yeah, Bruce is cooler than him. You got Quint, Bruce, Hell Dreyfus, and that stupid <laughs> that, that mayor that's an asshole trying to kill everyone. <laughs> Way better. <laughs> what more is there to say about Sequest DSV that hasn't already been said? Like you said, hot takes. Are there any left? I don't know. <laughs> I mean, I've never seen it. Me neither. Uh, that uh, dude, Michael Ironside being present, uh, that right there, ha- it gives it some geek credential. A little bit. That's why. So I, I can't make fun of anybody for. Dude, we all like questionable things. There are plenty of, for instance, questionable purchases. I own on DVD the complete series of Wings. So I have no <laughs> right. Wow. I have no right to make fun of anybody purchasing Sequest. DSV? Yeah. SUV? I don't know what's going DSV, on. DSV, OSV. Is this the one with uh, David Caruso? If 
anyone wants to know more about Russ's uh, questionable purchases, let us know down below. Maybe even our, maybe we should go through our own collections and just pull out things that we believe are questionable purchases and just showcase them. I don't Dude, know. let's do that for our next, instead of doing a part two to our, you our know, collection. collection, let's do, let's go through our collection and do, oh, these are the ones that, the ones that people aren't showcasing. Are going to make our, of us four. Yeah, not our special, special editions, <laughs> but like, let's, let's pick out, hey, here's my copy of Lost World, Jurassic Park. <laughs> Win a date with Tad Hamilton. Coming right up. No, I like that. I like that. Maybe that'll be next. If you want to hear that next or see that next, let us know down below. But thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for hanging in there, listening, liking. Come back. Check out our YouTube channel this week. We're also going to have a blue or a 4K versus 4K comparison of Phenomena, the Arrow release and the Synapse release. We'll have that up on our channel a little bit later this week as well. Again, happy birthday to you, Mark Vaccaro. Happy birthday, Mark. Shouts out to you, sir. Thank you so much for everything you've done. And all the fans out there, thanks for sticking by us and coming back for another week at Blue News and Reviews. See you next time.